To the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. All right, great. Uh, please call the roll. Okay, uh, Director Ratterman. Here. Director Cicada. Here. Director Thomas. I'm here. Director Underhill. Here. President Davidson. I'm here as well. Okay, uh, first item on the agenda is public comment. Uh, the public, at this time, the members of the public may address the board on any non agendaized item. The public is encouraged to work through staff to place items on the agenda for board consideration. No action will be taken on matters not listed on the agenda. Comments are limited to three minutes per person. Is there any public comment today? I think Russ Thomas has a, a song to sing for public comment. If I'm not mistaken, that's. I, I doubt it. Is that? Okay. You're on. Okay. Well, we have to stand again. We should have done that after the pledge. So. All right. What are we doing? I'm going to sing the national anthem. I I wanted to do that at the at the uh, oh. board meeting forever. But uh, let's all stand again. Oh yeah, that's great. Well, and and uh, please uh, sing along. We're going to start it right here. Oh, oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs were seen in air. Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled but wave for the land of the free? And the home of the brave. Oh, awesome. Good job, Russ. Excellent. Okay, uh, we're going to move on to the board workshop. <laughs> Adoption of the street strategic plan, mission, vision, values, and goals. Who's up? <laughs> Thank you, um, Maria, if you could please uh, bring up the document. I want to just thank um, Russ. That is the best birthday present we all received today. So thank you very much and have a happy birthday. We're glad to kick it off with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sorry, Maria, do you mind bringing up the agenda really quickly so I can take a run through it? Um, so uh, thank you directors for being at our last board workshop. Um, this is our third board shop on the district's uh, strategic plan, five year strategic plan for 2026. Today um, we are going to understand the strategic plan approach and schedule, finalize the goals and develop prioritized objectives. And we're going to talk about the next steps. So. Just to remind everybody about the process to date, we kicked this off in October. We did a survey in November that included the board. It included staff and it also included some outside uh, district members, stakeholders. And we've had three workshops in January, February. This is our ultimate workshop. And in April, we're gonna come back to the board to adopt the final strategic plan. 
The inner rim, we are going to ask you to vote to adopt the mission, vision, values, and goals. Um, to remind everybody, the mission, vision, and values were developed in the first workshop, finalized in workshop two. We also finalized the goals in workshop two. Uh, we made some slight changes, so you'll be able to see those today. After we vote and adopt um, the mission, vision, value, and goals, we're going to take a much deeper dive. The devil's always in the details on the priority objectives. Um, so we're gonna spend quite a bit of time. We're going to allow three hours for that, which is a long time. We'll take a break, um, but hopefully we've designed this in a way to really expedite some decision-making um, around the priorities. And then we'll go over next steps. With that, I'd like to turn the mic over to General Manager Michael Minkler. Thank you, Ellen. I'm, I'm still getting over the chills from the national anthem. Thank you, Director Thomas. That was that was phenomenal. Uh, and I encourage you all to experience it here in the boardroom when you get a chance. That was uh, the best this room's ever sounded, I think. Um, <laughs> the acoustics are actually pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us Friday morning, uh, third and final strategic planning board workshop. Um, really excited about this process. I just want to um, acknowledge really quickly and, and thank Ed Pattison for joining us, um, general manager at TUD, uh, one of our important neighbors and partners. And um, hopefully we may see a few other um, uh, partners joining. Um, and they, they may not be able to participate for the whole thing, but um, folks are interested in what in, in this process and how this is playing out and, and um, you know, this is a big development for CCWD, so it has attracted some interest and um, really appreciate folks joining in and, and participating if, if they want to. Um, also, hopefully, yeah, go ahead, Ed. If I may, thank you for the invite. Uh, I did hear from Michael yesterday. It was tough to squeeze this in, but uh, I, I think the TU, on behalf of the TUD board, and I, I'm sure of the CCWD board, uh, that collaboration and partnerships uh, uh, go without saying. And so the, uh, that, that's a primary purpose for attending this morning. And lastly, I'll say, uh, Russell, I will tell you, you blew up my speaker from that far away. So uh, good <laughs> job. I've heard Russ sing in person, so I know uh, how he can hit some of those high notes, but thanks for uh, starting out the day right. Good to see you, Ed. Yeah, thanks, Ed. Um, and uh, we, we so we may, and like I said, we may have a, a few others uh, jumping in and out, and I'll try to acknowledge folks as they as they do. Um, and um, and I just want to, I also want to thank um the staff and um the consultants that we're working with here this i think is going to be a really productive session today where we really dive in it's kind of this is probably the heaviest lift of the three sessions that we've done with the board um where we really dive in you know we drill down below the mission vision values statements and really get into the objectives um that we've put a lot of time into and it, a, a lot of it has come, you know, we tr tried to capture the information that we received through the interviews that have been done and the surveys that have been done and, and um, the input we've received from all levels of the organization and from people outside of the organization. Um, and, and so what we, we've really tried to capture all of that in, um, in these goals and objectives and really looking forward to feedback from the board on this. Um, the, we also, we did an all hands staff meeting where we presented this information um, last week and didn't get a tremendous amount of feedback, um, but definitely wanted to make sure since staff staff provided a lot of input that goes into these objectives through the surveys uh, that were done and wanted to present this information so that they had another opportunity to review it and provide some more input. And still, um, you know, that's that, uh, that door is still open um, we are, we're asking the board to adopt the new mission, vision, and values today, um, but the goals and objectives will come back for adoption um, at a future date. And so any input that folks have, um, you know, we still have opportunities to incorporate, incorporate that input. Um, so this is, as we've discussed before, I think a really, um, just, just with the amount of transition 
and and uh, change that is occurring at CCWD. It's really kind of a unique time in CCWD's history. I think it's a perfect time for a strategic plan to map out the course for not just the next five years, but this will help set the course um, you know, beyond that as well. Uh, and I think we have a really unique opportunity here to, to, to do that, to set us off on a good course. So um, I, I just really, I think this is an incredibly important process. It's gonna be a very important document for staff to use going forward um, in our decision-making and in our presentations board. Um, demonstrating consistency with the plan that we're adopting here is going to be a big part of um, of staff presentations going forward. So this is not a, a a work product that is not going to be that is going to sit on the shelf. This is going to be an important part of our, our decision making. Um, so I really encourage and and appreciate feed everybody's feedback. Um, the the consultant team's done a great job of incorporating that feedback. Um, I heard from one of uh, the uh, one staff member who was interviewed and, and and provided a survey and said he was very pleased to see um, pretty much all of the main points that he had provided to us incorporated into one degree or another in the in the work that's been done. Um, and I just think that's 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 reflective of the care uh, and attention that the consultants have put into to the work product that we have here. So I'm really, really grateful for that. Um, and um, so with that, I think we're ready to get going. Um, I see that Larry McKinney from Amador Water Agency has just joined us. Um, so I want to acknowledge Larry and thank, thank you for joining us this morning, Larry. We're just getting started, although you just missed a phenomenal rendition of the national anthem uh, from Director Thomas. But uh, uh, I'm sure that as a, as a veteran, you would appreciate that. And, and maybe next time we'll make sure, uh, make sure we catch that for you or, or we'll send you the recording. It, it, it was all pre-recorded, so you can. Yeah. This is <laughs> Thanks. Okay, it's great so to be with, here. Yeah. Thank you, Larry. So with that, I'll turn it over to back to Ellen or John. Uh, Michael, um, it's Ellen. So th yeah, yeah, John can't be with us here today, but thank you, sure. um, Michael. And I do want to thank both Ed and Larry. And if I miss anyone, I think it shows um, tremendous support for the district that you've had a lot of input from your adjacent neighbors. And I just wanna commend you for that because our watersheds, as you know, don't stay within sometimes our county boundaries or um, even some of the initiatives that we wanna take, take a larger partnership, particularly as we go after funding, as we look at um, water resiliency and also fire uh, management. So I just wanna thank Ed and Larry for taking their time to be a part of the district's uh, process. And we do look forward to hearing from both of you. So please, everyone should raise their hand. Um, we are going to allow the board to comment first, but any comments that can help us make this a better, more uh, adaptive, but resilient plan, the better for the district. So thank you. Um, with that, I'd like uh, Maria, if you don't mind, we I have one correction, Michael, we are going to vote today on the mission, vision, value and goals. We want to make sure that we have the overarching goals correct. Um, and then you will vote at the next board meeting on the uh, plan that will include really the objectives. And as I already mentioned, this is where the real heavy lifting is. And I want to invite the board when we're evaluating these objectives, you may not agree with every objective, but I want you to think about um, as we weigh in, if it's something that isn't going to detract from the district. And I hope that at the end of this process, I can tell you my heart was singing, Russ, maybe not as melodically as your voice, but when I heard uh, that staff could already see themselves in this plan, that to me was a victory with a big win because I want everyone to see that there's something in this plan for them that's going to help speak to their constituents or to their role and responsibility um, of delivering on the district's highest priorities. So we wanna make sure everybody can see themselves in this. So with that, um, we're going to read through the mission, vision, values, and goals. And then we're gonna ask Rebecca to do a, uh, we'll ask if there's any further uh, comments or consideration for edit, 
but we'd like to vote on this one uh, piece of paper here, which is the mission, vision, values, and goals. So with that, um, Maria, did you want to read them? Do you want me to? Your voice is better than mine, and we could just prove that if we sing another song. Uh, okay, sounds, sounds fine. I'll, I'll read them for us so we can have some little breaks in between. Um, so we formatted here all of the mission, vision, values, and goals on one page. We're going to go through. I'll read them so that people on the phone can hear them. And then um, Rebecca will take roll call for the vote. So the mission statement, as Ellen said, um, we began with this one, the vision and the values. And our mission statement has been refined to now read, protect, enhance, and develop Calaveras County's water resources and watersheds to provide safe, reliable, and cost-effective services to our communities. Yeah, maybe we'll pause right there and just ask, um, is there any feedback on the mission statement that's not already stated within the statement before we go forward? Hands from the board. I have nothing to add. I think it's uh, just as we refined it, that sounds great to me. Okay, and with I'm no additions. Go ahead. And I'm good with it, thanks. Thank you. I'm good with it. Okay, with no additional comments, go ahead, Maria. Okay, and then next we move on to the vision statement, which is how we see ourselves moving forward. And that is to be a trusted leader, to collaborate with our valued partners, and provide healthy, innovative, and resilient water resource solutions. If there's any comments on the vision statement, this would be the time to make them. Okay, go ahead, Maria. Okay, and now our values we have in two formats. Um, the first format is this bulleted list, which will be good for materials and outreach and for listing the individual um, statements. And after that, I will also read a combined value statement that may be used as an alternative in other materials. So first, here's our list of values. We seek to create a positive customer experience. We are transparent in our relationships. Communication is the foundation upon which we build. We are mindful stewards of our assets and resources. Inclusive teamwork is fundamental to our success. We operate with integrity. We value the health, well being, and safety of our employees and their dedicated contributions. And we adapt to changing conditions by assessing risk and seizing opportunity. Any comments on the bulleted list of values? I like it. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. If you'd like to go to the statement. And a more concise version of the values, we came up with this statement together. We strive to build trust by forming transparent relationships, creating positive customer experiences, being mindful stewards of our assets and resources, and operating with teamwork and integrity. I like it. That sounds good. Yeah, it all sounds great. But that would be instead of the bullet points? It's in addition That's to the bullet points, oh. yes. Say that again? In addition. So we in have addition. two alternatives so they can be used if you need a smaller, concise statement or if you like the list form. Uh, I think they can be used um, in different formats for different purposes. So we've got both of them. Okay. okay, if there's no further comment, these are the goals. So today we'll be voting on the goals, not the objectives, but the goals um, will be as stated as follows. And then the objectives today, you'll have your opportunity to make edits um, and develop new objectives if we uh, omitted any. Go ahead, Maria. 
Okay, so the goals here are the buckets in which we will place our objectives. These are the overarching goals. Goal A, fiscal responsibility. Prioritize investments based on risk and benefit to our communities and fulfill the district services commitments. Goal B, programs, projects, and initiatives. Implement programs, projects, and initiatives to ensure water reliability for the prosperity and well being of our residents, businesses, and watershed. Goal C Operational Integrity Ensure district operations deliver efficient and reliable water and wastewater services. Goal D Customer Experience build trust and demonstrate value to customers with responsive service and positive experiences. Goal E, people and partnerships. Engage our stakeholders and partners to best protect our water resources and infrastructure and further our shared interests. Goal F, enduring organization. Ensure reliable and consistent services through building an evolving organization that reflects the district's values. And just a note about the lettering of the goals. The goals have been lettered for purposes of discussion and assigning objectives to goals, but these goals are not presented in any priority order. Thank you, Maria. Are there any questions, comments, additions to the goals? <clears throat> I, I understand completely that uh, there's no uh, priority um, indicated here, but in both the vision statement and in the uh, values, we, we stress that the positive customer experience and, and you're going to be a trusted leader. So I, I would, would make a strong recommendation that we move those uh, goals that are related to uh, building trust and uh, customer relations to goal A or, or something near the top that we demonstrate to our, our customers that everything that follows uh, is intended to achieve that primary goal of making a transparent organization, one that can be trusted and that communicates well, well with the customers. That's Thank fine. you. And we have no problem when we um, develop the format of the actual strategic plan, we can make sure that that uh, is prioritized in the first position. So it's the beginning of the goal section. So we can make that note, but that shouldn't um, at this time on uh, as for the matter of the vote have any bearing, but we will move it up in the design of the strategic plan. So thank you for that input. Yeah, and well, just to just to clarify, and I realized I didn't have my camera on before so y'all can see my mask. Um, <laughs> the um, I, I think because we are asking the board, I think the next thing we will be doing is asking the board for a motion to adopt these statements. Uh, so I just want to clarify that we would be moving goal B, customer experience, to goal A, and then I guess just push everything else down. And that, again, is not reflective of priority, but I like the synergy there between the first value statement and having that as the as goal A. Um, well, so I, think, yeah, I think that's the point. Everybody seems to be eager to agree with me, but I'm only one board member. Maybe other people think it should go further down the list. Uh, I agree with you, Russ. I fully I'm, support that. And okay. I'm also in agreement with you, Russ. That, that's three out of five. All right. So we'll take that note for the final document. Um, and, uh, and and that's the way it'll appear. Okay, thank you. And I, uh, I support you as well, Russ, but only because it's your birthday. <laughs> and I just had a minor question. I, you know, of course, addressed all the goals, but I'm looking at the draft objectives and where and when will we be discussing that part of it? Because that's the, that's the rest have... of the morning. Pardon? That's the whole rest of the morning. Okay, well. <laughs> that, that'll be, once we adopt these, uh, once the board adopts these, the rest of the morning. Okay, so we're, we're doing the cover right now is what we're doing. Well, the mission, 
the mission right. statement, the vision statement, and all of the values and um, these goals are items that we really honed over the last two workshops. Right. And so I think this is. It, it sounds like what 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 we're hearing from the board is this 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 captures what the work that we did before. <clears throat> we became the board for adoption of these items, and then the rest of the workshop today we will spend on the objectives. Well, if no one has any changes to this, I'll go ahead and move for uh, a motion to accept the the mission, vision, values, and goals as as stated here in front of us uh, today. I'll, I'll second say. that. Oh. Take your pick. Well, B comes before C. <laughs> That's fine for that. <laughs> okay. Rebecca, do you screen? want to move to roll call? Okay. Is Jeff on mute? Let's see. Talk to us, Jeff. I don't see Jeff unless he's the call in number. Yeah, he is. Yes, he is. So he's on mute. Let me take him off mute if I can. I was, let me see if I can. I can't take. So, Jeff, you need to hit star six on your phone to take yourself off of mute. Or there, there you, you go. go. Oh. All right. I'm here now, I guess. Yes, <laughs> we can hear you now, Director. I was, I was enthusiastically supporting everybody's comments. <laughs> <laughs> Great. OK, um, President Davidson, we have a motion and a second to accept the strategic plan, mission, vision, values, and goals. So I'm going to call roll. How about uh, no public comment? Hold on. Oh. Uh, I believe we need to ask for public comment. <clears throat> is there any public comment? Okay, well then go ahead. Okay. Director Ratterman? Yes. Director Cicada? Yes. Director Thomas? Yes. Director Underhill? Yes. President Davidson? Yes. Guess we can go home now. So what's what's uh, what's next here? OK, well, thank you. It looks like we have a unanimous vote. This is wonderful. This is a testament to you all collaboratively working together, um, not only to develop and create, but also to confirm that the board is moving in unison uh, with the overarching mission, vision, values and goals, which is really the heart of the strategic plan. Now we're going to move in to do some more heavy lifting on the objectives. So the staff, as well as the consultants, worked hard to capture the surveys, the interviews, as well as on um, the last two workshops when people were bringing up ideas that we decided didn't really um, go up to the goal level, but fit nicely under one of the goals that you just adopted. We created an objective around it. So we asked you to review those objectives and there's three things that we're going to focus on today. And that's going to be, are there any objectives missing? Are there any objectives that should just be completely eliminated because you don't feel that's something the district should focus on? Or are there any objectives that need to be modified? And we're really gonna ask you around the modification what in the objective is not resonating with you? Is there the tone of the objective? Is there is there something that's just not aligning? And we are not going to spend time today because we only have three hours and there's a lot of material here wordsmithing. You can imagine what it would take to wordsmith unless there's a recommendation that you made while reviewing the objectives and you have your edits there. We are really not going to spend our time on wordsmithing. Rather, do we have the tone of the objective correct? Does anything need to be added to it or eliminated or toned down? So again, the three things that we'll be doing as we go through these goals and objectives, are there any objectives missing? Are there any objectives that just should absolutely be eliminated? 
and why? And then are there any objectives that you'd like to see modified to make it uh, resonate more with uh, the goals of the district? So with that, Maria, if we'd like to go ahead and work on goal A. And again, we'll move, uh, we'll move around, uh, move up the community, uh, the customer uh, satisfaction goal to the top, but we're just going to go with what was sent out. So under fiscal responsibility, this goal is to prioritize investments based on risk and benefits to our communities and fulfill the district's service commitments. I'm going to go ahead and read rather quickly each of the objectives, and then I'm going to ask you those three questions and um, we can do a roll call. So each of the directors have an opportunity to comment and then we can also ask the public, but we're going to go goal by goal so we can try to move this. This is three hours and we are going to take a break um, today. So if I forget, remind me, we'll get to take a break after maybe the second goal. So under fiscal responsibility, we have a strategic um, objective one, develop and commit to a long-term financial strategy and framework to fund the projects identified in the CIP and other long-term district obligations and needs. Two, create alternative funding and financing through grants and partnerships to execute our CIP for short, mid and long-term investments. Three, Develop and align annual budgets with prioritized projects and CIP that can be implemented based on value added and benefit to district customers. Four, develop best management practices for budget forecasts and tracking and base decisions on data driven outcomes that define and reflect value and cost effectiveness. Five, review financial bud budget systems and tools and update if needed. Six, commit to responsible financial decisions during our day-to-day -day operations. Seven, maintain our legislative obligation to not change, charge more and not charge less than it costs to provide reliable services. And finally, eight, communicate the district's fiscal obligations and accountability to our customers through transparency and effective public outreach. I want to draw to everyone's attention that the last um, objective of every goal, we tried to underscore communication because every single one of these goals in order to be successful will take a commitment to communication. So while we have communication um, and partnership as part of our overarching goals, we wanted to make sure we had an objective that spoke to that specifically. Um, so with that, I'd like to uh, start and I'm just going to go off of our uh, agenda asking each director to answer one of the three following questions. Did we miss any objectives under this goal? Do we need to consider add a, adding any objectives? Do we need to um, modify any of the objectives? So with that, I'd like to open it up to Director Ratterman to make comments on the objectives under goal A. Um, Ellen, I don't have any comments at this time. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, Director Sakata. Yes, I have um, regarding number seven. I I don't. It doesn't fit well with me where it says you know obligation to charge uh, not not charge more and not charge less. Is there something else we could say to get to the same? You know what you're trying to say it just it doesn't hit right with me but it's not a uh, deal breaker put it that way if i could comment on that uh, cindy i i uh, had a, a problem with seven as, as well I, I would rather see obligation change to mandate because it, it's it's uh, far more um, it's it's written in the law in, in, in that 218 process that we we have to charge what it costs us to provide so it's not an obligation although it, you know, it could be considered an obligation but to me it's a mandate which is a stronger word you know and maybe it could be just something like maintain our legislative uh, mandate to regarding cost to provide reliable service i don't know i i just don't like that there it seems wishy-washy or something 
And just to remind um, the board, the reason we have this is really trying to get to that fiscal responsibility. Um, and I also believe we were looking at some of the affordability, which is a politically charged word. So we don't try to use that. Uh, word. So we were really trying to get to the essence of what is our fiscal responsibility uh, around costs for reliable services. Might I make a comment, please? We Absolutely. We've always, when we come through our rate hearings, we always emphasize the fact that we are looking at how much it costs us to provide service. So the cost of service is one that is not you know, really emphasize, and that is our key. What does it cost us to provide adequate service? Michael, what does it actually say in the legislation? I've gone to a number of rate, public rate hearings, and, and it's right. always explained to the people that are there uh, saying, you know, why does it cost so much? And why do you have to raise our rates? And you know, it's always explained, well, we, we have to, we, it's required by law that we cannot charge less than it actually cost us. Well, it's I think the language that is often cited is in reference to charging the cost of delivery, and it usually comes up in the context of um, a challenge for charging too much, mm -hmm. and and a, a property owner, a customer, just mm -hmm. using the cost of service to that, that property. Um, and so that's the, the the tough work that happens in a in a rate study is determining what the cost of service to the customers. Um, we we could modify this to say maintain our legislative mandate to charge the appropriate cost of service to provide reliable services. That's that's a better better solution. Yeah. Um, Maria, did you get that? Yeah, so maintain our legislative mandate to charge the appropriate fees. And maybe we use the word fee. Yeah, fee fees to provide fees. reliable services. Perfect. I'm Dress. better with that. Great. Nice. Okay, thank you. And with that, I'd like to see if um, Director Underhill has any other comments. Um, no, I'm good other than, you know, inclusion of, of cost of service. That's fine. Thank you, Director Thomas. <clears throat> Looking at uh, two that says, uh, well, first of all, in, in one, it's uh, we're talking about develop and commit to long term financial strategies. And then number two says create alternative funding. Um, it, it seems like that that, that needs a, an introductory phrase about you know in addition to the above, create alternative funding because um, it it uh, I don't know it almost implies that that we could always fund our projects with alternative funding opportunities like grants and partnerships, which of course is not not the case it's very infrequently that you can do that sure we could say as part of our financial strategy okay comma create alternative funding so it's just yeah i think that's a good way to put it oh sorry Ellen, i didn't mean to cut you off go ahead but i think that's a good way to put it because i think you know when we're doing our our long-term financial planning we're not counting on grants or other alternative sources of revenue necessarily, unless we have some assurance that it's certain. Mm -hmm. um, but we're always pursuing those is the I think, balance we're trying to strike there. And I just want to remind everybody when we're looking at a financial strategy, um, lots of times like the infrastructure package coming out of uh, our nation's capital, we've known that's coming for a long time. When it's coming, what the details are, but, you know, we're helping our uh, agency clients to start preparing and pre-positioning for that funding long in advance. So I think this is a very astute objective to put into your plan. Any other um, comments, Director Thomas? That's all, That's all Thank for me. Thank you. Director Davidson. No, I, I have nothing to add. 
Thank you. So um, at this point, it sounds like the board, this would be the time to comment on any of the objectives for goal A. While we are not taking a formal vote um, right now, I would like to ask the board, is there any reason you think that we could not go forward with a vote at the next board meeting um, on the objectives as listed under goal A? I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I'd be willing to vote on it next time. I'm good with it as well. It looks good to me, unless I change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're not just saying that because it's Russ's birthday. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. If Russ sings next time, I'll vote for it then too. <laughs> Oh yes, I I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to ask Russ if he could create a song around our value statement because that could be really fun. I'll I'll go to work on it immediately. I I could see a collaboration between Damon and Russ on that some uh, singer songwriting. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't forget a duet. To, We've talked a lot about it. it. And and happen. Richard Hibbard. Yeah. Let's, let's <laughs> we have we have some musical talent in the organization. Let's just put it that way. Our, uh, <laughs> Our union president is a songwriter and a good one. So as you guys remember, I'm still singing those jingles back from the 1970s. So putting it to music works. OK, okay thank you, um, Maria. I think we can go on to goal B. Great. Hmm. So Maria, you want to read this one? Sure. Okay. Goal B, B. programs, oh, projects, and initiatives. Implement programs, projects, and initiatives to ensure water reliability for the prosperity and well being of our residents, businesses, and watershed. So, we have a number of objectives here. The first one leverage hydropower projects to benefit the near and long term priorities for the district and its stakeholders. And hydropower was a, a, an objective that received a lot of comments. So, there are some um sub bullets underneath hydropower and those are a ensure hydropower resources protect water supply reliability and provide revenue for operations b determine funding mechanisms to support FERC relicensing c negotiate with project partners to increase financial benefit from north fork and new hogan hydroelectric projects in the next license term D, continue to utilize and build the Water Resources Fund and FERC Relicensing Fund to protect water rights and preposition for FERC relicensing. So that's it for the hydropower. And now we'll move on to these other objectives. Objective for, two. Maria, if you don't mind, yeah. I'd like to just make a quick comment on that one. Um, and and it's be, the comment is we, we, we put some work and some thought into how to capture this in the objectives um, because a lot of these objectives here um, with respect to the hydropower projects could have you could have you could have had a mention of the hydropower projects in each of the goals um, and, it, and I think the, the concern we had was that that might um, overstate or it might create a perception of overstating the focus on that rather than a focus on on water and wastewater operations and uh, we know obviously and and we received a lot of input on the importance of uh, the hydropower projects and so we're not trying to diminish that in any sense but we we thought it was better to try to capture all of the objectives objectives that are related to the hydropower projects in one in one place rather than have it spread throughout the six different goals. And we thought the programs, projects, and initiatives goal was the right place to do that, because it really is, um, you know, we are taking a programmatic approach to these objectives that are, that are laid out here. So that's why you see some of these will overlap with, with the finance goal or an operations goal or um, enduring organization goal, um, but we thought it was better to consolidate all of the hydropower objectives into this one one area and you probably won't see it come up in any of the other 
any of the other goals, even though they would overlap with those areas. So that's the explanation for why we did it this way, but um, happy to, to receive board feedback on that. Thank you for that explanation. That's very well put. There, there was a lot of hydropower all over the place and it's much easier to um, process here altogether. So I'll quickly run, well, not quickly, there, there are quite a number. <laughs> I'll run through these other objectives. Uh, projects was a, a, a popular uh, uh, goal. So our, our second um, objective, comply with the state mandated Sustainable Groundwater Management Act as part of the district's integrated water reliability and resilience commitment. And there is a specific um, goal for that, which is A, update governance structure for groundwater sustainability planning. So over time, you may develop more of these um, specific objectives underneath a broader overarching objective. Objective three, evaluate feasibility of and implement plan to secure new water storage. Objective, Excuse me. yes. Excuse me, I had a question on that. That's a, that's a whole big subject, new water storage. And uh, how we can capture that is going to be our big, our big, uh, you know, part of this goal. Uh, can we maybe put it more finite? I, yeah, that's a, me? it's a great question. And this is one we, we talked a lot about too. And, and I think uh, at one point, we, I think we specifically mentioned the effort to secure storage in New Maloney's, but there are other efforts or other potential opportunities that um, we, so we felt like in the end, the objective, we didn't want to call out any single specific um, uh, effort to secure storage. It, we, it was broader to, we want to identify any opportunities where additional storage would be appropriate and feasible and, and where there's um, opportunities to take advantage of that. And I think the, the New Maloney's effort is the biggest one, um, but we don't want to, we, we didn't want to, ignore you know whether there might be a, a groundwater transfer possibility somewhere and some storage opportunities or um, you know other other components of that initiative so that was why we left it pretty pretty broad the way that it's stated but it is very broad and michael you just well, go ahead me, okay you used one word but i think what we're saying is we want to maximize the use of our water <laughs> I'm sorry, where does it say maximize? Are we still talking for number three? Yeah. It says evaluate feasibility and implement plan to secure new water storage. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. All right, I, I follow you. All right. Um, thank you, uh, Scott. The, uh, um, it, se it seems like I, I, you, you just in your in your comments, Michael, you just mentioned the word uh, transfer, but I didn't see it on this page. And as a we, we don't know, talk about no. Yeah, we were we were pretty careful to um, not that we're you know that that's that's not part of the the potential opportunities, especially where there's um, you know as we're as we're moving forward into Sigma implementation. Um, but we also want to be careful that you know, how we how we frame that and the, the effort around water storage really has to do with water supply reliability and resiliency. And so we didn't want to, you know, we didn't want to use that. So, but what if I'm understanding Director Adam, are you making a suggestion? Maybe we need to consider a new objective that deals with transfer? No, I think it's part of a program project and initiative and, and it is a, a, a future goal, I mean, even if it's not stated. Uh, it, it certainly would be a, uh, uh, I mean, it fit into financial too. It'd be, new, you know, possible new, new, which is something I think everyone on this board is uh, is aware of. Is if we can get new, new funding, new, new money coming from somewhere besides rates, um, it, it would sure, it would sure ease uh, ease the financial burden on on everybody and every ratepayer. 
but it is it is uh, I mean it is a great goal to have and I don't know how to put it in here without oh did we lose everybody no there we go and I so uh, what I would recommend what? Maria can you make a comment box and say consider transfer as part of the financial uh fiscal responsibility that's probably where it would go and we could have some more discussion um around that is there are there any other directors interested in adding an objective under one of the goals regarding transfers no not I, me. I don't um is do i have an opportunity to go back uh, to the uh, sigma discussion yeah, and we, we're going to go through just as we did before. I was hoping Maria could read through all these just so we can understand what's in there. But if it, we can do that now, if you like, go to that. And I also know that Brad has his hand up um, to make a comment as well. So, Brad, before we go back to Sigma, do you want to make your comment? Yeah, thanks, Ellen. And um, I think this is a, a really good discussion on the bullet point related to storage. Um, one thought that came to mind when Michael mentioned groundwater was that I would want to maybe add the term conjunctive use in there somewhere, something along new water storage and conjunctive use opportunities, because that's the sort of the nod to groundwater recharge and, and things that way that we can utilize our position in the sub basin to work with others to recharge and beneficially use our groundwater resources. Uh, specific to the transfer discussion, though, uh, Michael's right that we gave a lot of thought into wanting to avoid the term trans transfers because it's a real hot and button topic. But Director Ratterman's point is a good one that we do see that as a long term option for revenue sources. And so that being said, if we are at all going to reference or use the term transfers in here, I would make sure to include the term transfers and exchanges. Uh, I found that at the state level, when you make a nod or at least, you know, acknowledge that it's transfers and exchanges, you can usually get further and people drop their guard a little bit. Not sure entirely why, but I found that to be the case. Thank yeah, you. And, and I just want to emphasize too that our 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 main objective when we talk about developing additional storage is, is water supply and, and reliability and resiliency. And I I think we should we should deliberately tie the storage initiative to those to those um, to those end goals. Um, and that's what we that's what we tried to do here. So, Michael, are you suggesting we add a plan to secure new water storage for water supply and reliability? To the end. Um, I would be in favor of that and just leave it at that. New, secured new water storage for water supply, reliability, and resiliency. Good. Okay. Um, great. And before we move um, up to the sigma, I just want to understand better do we want to have more discussion around the transfer and exchanges i heard some directors saying that's not a priority for them but i'd like to ask the question a little differently would the directors who said it's not a priority would you oppose having it in your strategic plan as a consideration I believe Director Davidson, you were not interested in, in having uh, transfers. Would you be opposed to including an objective about transfers and exchanges? I would be. I don't know um, why why you would have that impression, but yeah, I would I would be uh, in favor of including that. Oh, you would be in favor. Maybe I misunderstood. I think so, they misunderstood the the question, Ellen. Both Russ and, and Jeff um, responded positively, but I think it was the way the question was posed. Yeah. OK, OK, so maybe if we could just scroll up to fiscal responsibility uh, or maybe it's under programs, projects and initiatives, if we could just add an objective, Maria. Mm -hmm that says um you already have it here but i put add there consider water transfers and exchanges as part of the district's portfolio as a whole new objective as a whole new objective so consider water transfers and exchanges as part of 
and, and sorry to just jump in, Ellen, this is Brad again, but I, I would maybe caveat that with some nod to um, as allowed by our permitted water rights or, or some sort of caveat in there that acknowledges that there are transfer guidelines and, and things that may constrain our ability to transfer, but we will do our best to explore and consider those opportunities. And I, I was gonna, well, I think actually the, the caveat I think I would like to see is just as a part of our, as a part of a water integrated water management strategy. Um, and I, yeah, so I think trying to, again, tie this to water supply. And Michael, I think a few years ago we put together a, a water transfer like bill of rights, uh, you know, how we how we would how we would do it and got a lot of positive support from the uh, environmental community on on how we were on how it was going to be done. I don't know if we've abandoned that document or or uh, or, or looking at changing it, but we did put some time in, into that geez, like five years ago. Yeah, I don't think it's it's been abandoned. Actually, it might be something. Let's go back. Actually, maybe maybe uh, Ellen will go back and look at that and and see if it it makes sense to reference it um, and put some thought into how we want to characterize this objective. Yeah, and I just wanted to ask: is is there any reason we may not want to include this objective? You and, and I should say that your strategic plan does not need to be exhaustive, meaning you don't need every single objective to be stated in your strategic plan in order to do it. That's the beauty of having a flexible document that you get to revisit annually on how you're going to operationalize your objectives. So if there are any reasons that you may not want to state it here, it doesn't mean you you can't pursue that in the future. It just means it's not your highest um, priority that's going to be outward facing. And I was thinking I'd like to see it in here because we are getting so specific on so many other exact projects that we're working on. Um, it, you know, folk, the FERC, FERC relicensing and, and other other projects related to in anyway, it, uh, I, I like, I'm glad that it's in here in some in some fashion. And thanks, Brad, for your uh, your, your comments on. And w one of the things that he did say is about conjunct conjunctive use. Is that something that can be thrown in that sentence with yes. with the word water transfers? Um, actually, I think we were going to include it under water supply, right, Brad? Number three for new water storage. I mean, yeah, that that would kind of go hand in hand with the idea of water storage. You um, could just put a parentheses example, conjunctive use. Yeah, and, and then looking at number four, I, I, I like the way that that's coming together. Um, I would just change it where it says, as allowed by our permitted water rights, consistent with the district's integrated water management strategy, something like that. Right. OK, and we can still wordsmith as long. I just want to let the board know if we go back, we may wordsmith um, some of these objectives that would not change um, the tone or the meaning. But if we find a better word, we may use that. And we can draw that to your attention before you vote on it at the next uh, board meeting. But uh, we want that to stick. OK, I'd like to move up now to number two uh, for Director Thomas to talk about the Sigma. Well, um, Brad, you're still on, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, this uh, the Sigma Act only uh, applies to kind of only one percent of our uh, area of the county, and I'm I'm just fearful that uh, if this document is going to be produced and, and distributed uh, that uh, all 13,000 of our water uh, customers um, may feel like uh, 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 maybe I'm misstating that people that are not on our uh, water service but are on ground water wells even though that they're way outside of the sub basin they may conclude that there's <coughs> some kind of control that we're trying to put upon them so how, how do we um put in a kind of a disclaimer in in, in this discussion that, that um, you know, the sigma rulings only apply to uh, thousand acres out of thirty nine thousand that's a very good yeah. point for us really that, that is, i have yeah. a i have a comment on that as well 
Uh -huh. <clears throat> okay, I first I just want to see, I believe you directed your comment to Brad, correct? Director Thomas, yep. would you like him to respond to that? Before he does, can I make a quick comment that might be helpful? Sure, absolutely. Because I on that where it says comply, I made a note that, that because we are have such a small area there, maybe we should say to say something like um, continue to participate in the SGMA instead of comply with just in case there's something that we may or may not want to comply I would does that make a sense clarification here just for one second because it might answer both of those this is not obligating us to do less or more comply to state mandate it to a state mandate that's why we purposefully started the sentence that way it's not obligating you to invest or act but you do have to do it a basic minimum comply with the state mandate and that's a regulatory driven action so um, any other comments on that? And but, Brad, if you can provide clarification, that would be helpful too. But that's, oh, if it's mandated, if that particular SGMA plan, the members are mandated. If we weren't, if we decided to not be a member from for some reason, um, would we not be mandated by that? Well, so, that- Go ahead, Brad. That's exactly, what I was, that's exactly where I was going, Cindy, and I, and I, yeah, for that, that's kind of is kind of confusing why why it's in here with those with us complying. You know, the, the water district and the state mandated is not necessarily mandating the district. It's mandating somebody, but there's other members of that of that uh, partnership that <clears throat> may. Or, and I'm not quite sure how how much longer we're going to be we're going to be involved in that and to have that here as a five year goal. Um, is that what we want to do? So, so this is a really interesting discussion and, and I don't want to hijack it with getting into the, the depths of Sigma, but I can certainly envision a scenario where if CCWD were to exit the Eastside GSA, we would still need to comply with certain aspects of Sigma in the GSP, considering that we use groundwater in a portion of the subbasin, namely the Wallace area. Um, it is possible that the GSA moving forward without us could impose certain sustainability objectives, lockout, or, or I not, don't want to use lockouts, but that is a potential, things that they could impose on our service area to try and achieve the broader sub-basin uh, sustainability objectives. And so whether or not we decide to participate, you know, we could certainly help define those those guidelines and what those that potential future looks like. But in one way or the other, we are going to have to comply to Director Thomas's point in, in our area of the sub base and whether it be on the GSA and we're helping to formulate the what the compliance with sustainability looks like or whether we are subject to the sustainability objectives set forth by the GSA without us. Uh, and so to, to kind of address both of those, I'm, I'm tempted to reform this number two point to just make it broader groundwater management sort of make it a broader groundwater management objective nodding to the fact that we do have a lot of private groundwater users in the county who are not overlying the sub basin but we'll still work with them to the extent feasible to try and make sure that they're you know behaving in a generally sustainable manner and then maybe drop the sigma specific speak into a sub bullet that acknowledges sigma applies to our portion in the sub base and that is being managed under sigma hopefully that makes sense i i think that's a really good suggestion brad so uh, i think in the, maybe the primary objective to talk to so maybe the primary objective here is um you know responsible use of groundwater resources um, and evaluating opportunities for conjunctive use, and without without mentioning sigma in the in the primary objective, and then a sub objective could be evaluate um, or something along the lines of you know continue to evaluate our engagement in the East Side San Joaquin Groundwater Sustainability Agency, and um, updating the governance structure for that GSA. 
Thank you. I think yeah. that's really helpful modification. Um, that sounds good. And, and just to point out that the governance of the East Side GSA is certainly one component that the board and and will be you know considering in the future. But regardless of whether we move forward with the GSA as a participant or not, we will in our areas overlying the sub basin still need to comply with the GSA and with Sigma. And so there's sort of the two components. Um, and I, I'm open to thoughts on how we sort of acknowledge both of those. Sorry, I guess we got cut off. I was talking that whole time. <laughs> oh, sorry. Go ahead, Michael. And then after Michael, we'll have Larry McKinney um, did, contribute. Did you go guys ahead. Did you catch anything that I was saying or did it just get cut we, off? We did. Early? We got some of your edits, but you should feel free because I'm not sure where you cut off. Oh, OK, um, I was I was just starting to tell the story back. No, no, um, I was just I, I think Brad had a good suggestion of an overarching objective that focuses on responsible groundwater management and, and then under that continuing as, as director but ratterman mentioned continuing to evaluate our engagement in the gsa and um and updating the governance structure of the gsa um i i, I kind of get the feeling that we were way off in the bushes on what i was trying to achieve here i i just want to make sure that we don't alarm uh our um, people in the in the county that are not affected by sigma that uh, they somehow will be affected if they're if they're not over uh, in the in that the area of the county that overlies the sub basin, they don't have to worry about it. So how, and we how should we probably put some language as it relates to groundwater users in X part of the county. Um, mm -hmm. And again, we want to make sure. This is a perfect example of where a strategic plan is going to have something in it. We hope for all of the constituents um, that are related to the district and some things may not apply at all, but it doesn't necessarily make it um, competing with other priorities. Yeah, and I think just real quick, and then I, I, I really wanna get to Larry's comment. Um, I think that was part of what we tried, I, I think we would achieve or, or hope to achieve by taking Sigma out of that over the, the primary objective because there are other areas in the county where we have conjunctive use in place already and up in Ebbets Pass is one example and other areas where we might be developing that outside of the, the critically overdrafted basin. So I think the objective would be responsible management um, of groundwater resources countywide and then maybe a sub objective that talks about the GSA and the, and the sub basin. Thank you, and I'm really curious to hear what Larry has to say because he uh, has lived groundwater for a long time. Go ahead, Larry. Um, yeah, thanks. And this is a topic that is going to be um, coming up very quickly for the Amador board as a discussion. We're very similarly situated with regard to the GSA down at our western end. And I, I don't know exactly whether it's a bullet or a sub bullet, but I was going to suggest that uh, language that might work would be to continue to participate in groundwater management efforts to protect the district's interests, because that could be progressive or defensive either way. But the point is, you know, this is what I'm telling my board is that we need to be at the table, but we don't want to overcommit. So, you know, I just thought that language might be helpful. And I'm test driving it here to see if you like it, then I can take it to my board. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me, Larry. That, that's an excellent comment. Yeah, I was just going to well, jump thanks, in. I Larry, think. That, uh, well, I was just going to say that uh, I do agree with Larry's comment that uh, that is a good way of, of presenting it, too. Thanks. Sorry, Brad. No, no, sorry for, for jumping over you there. I, I was just going to echo what you're all saying that I think that's a great sub bullet point. I would be tempted to take that one, remove A and D, and then adjust C to say comply with state man, uh, mandated Sigma for areas overlying the eastern San Joaquin subbasin and just leave it with that B and C then. Perfect. Okay, thank you. And Maria, you're doing a fantastic job. I'm so glad it's Maria <laughs> driving. 
Um, I've had to do it and it's not as easy as Maria is making it look. So um, thank you. Any other comments on objective number two? And I just want to congratulate all of you. This is exactly the kind of input that we want to make this um, an adaptive plan as well as a relevant plan. So thank you. Uh, with that, uh, Maria, if we want to move on with uh, you reading the rest of the objectives, I know this is a long but very important goal because it really is the heartbeat of the district programs, projects and initiatives. OK, that sounds good, Ellen. I was wondering, do we maybe want to do this in chunks? Because now there are 12 objectives here and we did one through four. Maybe we yes, should do fine. five through eight now. Yes, sure. <laughs> OK, so um, objective five here, protect, develop and extend the district's water rights to ensure countywide water reliability. And there were a number of sub objectives underneath that. A, investigate potential beneficial uses for reserved rights on the McCallamy River. B, expand water deliveries by bringing the slurry line into service. C, work with partners in the agricultural community to ensure their water needs are met. D, develop a comprehensive watershed plan for White Pines Lake and San Antonio Creek. E, Extend potable water service to understand and I'm sorry, let me start that one over. <laughs> Extend potable water service to underserved and underrepresented areas. So that's all under water rights. And then objective six, seven, and eight, six. Protect our watersheds to adapt to climate change. Promote healthy forests for wildfire protection and water yield. Protect water quality and ensure sustainability. Seven, pursue sustainable water supply projects such as recycled water. And eight, develop a comprehensive energy strategy to generate revenue and decrease cost of operations. So I'm hoping maybe we can do this chunk here from five to eight, and then we'll move down to the last little chunk of objectives nine through 12. So any comments? I. I have a comment on um, item number five, and that's where we're ensuring sustainability. And that's a big, big subject. And, you know, do we need to add something else in there or? I think that's a good point. We could add ensure countywide water reliability and resilience at the end, and resilience often contains sustainability in it it's it's been a trend i would say for the last maybe two years that we're looking at a resilient basin that goes beyond just the three elements of sustainability but includes sustainability would that um meet your objective that would that would you know not make it sound so encompassing yeah that would that would work for me OK, any other comments? And I'm not going to call on you individually, but again, we're looking for any additions, eliminations or modifications. Yeah, hi, this is, this is Brad again. Uh, just wanted to point out that reliability in this context was a nod, I believe, to the fact that in the upcoming urban water management plan, we are going to be defining a working definition of long term water supply reliability as part of the new water shortage contingency plan components. And so given that we are going to be defining that through other channels, it may um, satisfy some of the concerns. I'll, I just wanted to point that out. Uh, but that being said, I'm not opposed to including terms like resiliency or sustainability, uh, but we may want to consider what that means and how we define those terms maybe outside of this document. Well, I think you bring up a good point. And one thing that we like to do in our strategic plans, I've only had to do it once in 30 years, but we kind of like to keep, long as it's not a politicized word like affordability, recently having to put definitions in, that would be a word we could have used pretty innocuously in the past. But once it takes on a different 
type of tone, then we want to steer away. If you feel, Brad, that reliability can be looked more in the generic sense here and not in a defined sense, that is what I would recommend. And the same word for resilience. Um, I, I don't want to take away from Director Underhill's uh, concern with that. Uh, I just wanted to point out that I think in this context, reliability is a, a term that needs to be yeah, unpacked and, and, and will encompass some of those concerns. And there are other efforts we are doing currently to try and unpack that term in the district's context that'll come out later. So are you making any suggestion that we need to change something as it's currently written? Um, my, my whole point is I, I think water reliability by itself was fine, but I, I don't want to take away that if if reading it doesn't encompass what other other um, uh, folks, if if it if the need is or the feeling is rather that we should include the other terms, then I don't want to take away from that. Um, I just wanted to point out that sort of there is a lot embedded in that term reliability already. Uh, per perhaps at this point, it's fine to just continue and, and keep both these here, and we can address that later on. Okay, yeah, particularly I think, Brad, since we don't have that definition for the district at this point, is I think it's okay to add that as just more description if it's not detracting. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, any other comments on these uh, four objectives, five through eight? No comments from me. I'm good. OK, Larry McKinney. Thanks. Um, on the water rights group of sub bullets, uh, there's a concept that uh, I don't think is really raised, and I don't know if the board would think that it's a priority, but um, I think we have kind of a, a family of of organizations up here in the in the headwaters and foothills with water rights that uh, that we might be able to work collaboratively uh, to make sure that we're protecting each other. And, and uh, I mean, just as an example, the state board is talking about whether to revisit how water rights work in light of climate change. I think that's something that we ought to all be working on together and there might be some uh, some good business opportunities to collaborate. So that idea of collaborating with other water rights holders in the watershed is I didn't see it in the list and I'm just suggesting it might be important. Larry, I'm really glad you brought up that brought that up because recently working with El Dorado Water Agency as well on their strategic plan, it is something unique to the foothills that a lot of your authorities that were bestowed upon you were all bestowed around the same year through your authorities and the Water Act. So it is something for consideration. So I'm really glad you brought that to the attention. Are there any comments on the recommendation that Larry's offered? I think it's a great suggestion. I'm glad you pointed it out. It it, it brings to mind that, you know, when SB 47, uh, was it 474 or 747? 474 came up two years ago. Um, you know, it was immediately a, a, a joint effort among Mountain County's agencies to oppose, um, you know, what was seen as an attack on, on our water rights that, affected it would have affected a, a lot of us so i think there's um a really key a key role there for collaboration and and i think we should we should capture it here so i'm, I'm glad you pointed that out Larry. so you, instead of watersheds you could say something maria to the headwaters right that's what you all have in common we're collaborating with other water right holders um in the headwaters or near the headwaters. Brad, do you have any recommendations? Um, I'm not sure about the headwaters term. Uh, I. I think as far as working collaboratively with, collaboratively with other rights holders just in the watershed. Just protect our collective interests, I think, and delete Yeah, I think waters. that's fine. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't include watershed either because they may be in different watersheds. Correct. Okay. Great. Um, Larry, did you have any other comments? 
your hands up. That's why I'm asking. No, I just failed to put it down. OK, thanks, Ed. Regarding the headwaters term, just wanted to point out that there is an aqua uh, group called the headwaters group. It may be worthwhile to use the term, but there is a definition with the aqua headwaters group that's actively working in the state uh, to uh, bring resources into the headwaters. Yeah, it's it's taking a lot of traction and Larry was actually on the aqua board when the headwaters issue came to a head, no pun intended. So um, we will work a little bit more maybe on that sentence, but in the spirit of time, I think we have the concept here. Uh, Director Ratterman. Yeah, I just wanted to, when we, we talk about water rights and then we get into very, very specific things below below it. I mean, five seems to be about water rights, but I think we're if we're going to talk about the McQuallamy, we're going to talk about the slurry line. We're going to get into White Pines Lake, San Antonio Creek. There's other water rights that we're not pointing out that might be more important, and and even and why we I don't know, not quite sure why we dove so deep into mentioning all, all these these others, and and then we're by doing so we're specifically ignoring um, you know water rights on the Stanislaw, for example. It, it's not mentioned. Um, I think is, that's a good point. Well, it's it's a great point, Director Ratterman, and this is another one where um, some of this could have been could have fit under different goals where we so we tried to consolidate um, these discussions and we we kind of we went back and forth on on including any level of specificity at the because of the risk you run is, you know, it, it may you may create the perception that something else is not a priority or that we're not working on. Um, many other water rights issues that we have that aren't listed here. And so, you know, I think it could, I think we we thought we would include these as specific objectives that, um, you know, we, we didn't want to ignore that because we know they're a priority and we know, um, you know, there's initiatives or efforts underway. And so we, we felt like we didn't want to ignore those, but at the same time, you're absolutely right that that we're it doesn't mean that we're not pursuing other, um, you know, other other avenues of, of water rights um, issues. So I, I'd be fine with either way, you know, if, if the board's preferences, we don't want to get into this level of detail at the risk of, of de-emphasizing something else, um, then we could take out the sub points. Um, or I, I do think in any event, I would I would still want to include something about uh, collaborating with agencies that share uh, a common interest. So I, I think we could still include an objective on those on that front, even if we took out some. <clears throat> really Michael, I also want to add that there were there were details included here, like White Pines in San Antonio, because it was feedback that came directly out of interviews as well as surveys. So again, we want to make sure that the voices were heard since we did a, a broad um, survey. My my point wasn't necessary to, to remove the bullet points, Michael, um, I, I, and maybe just add <clears throat> there in E other, you know, that just say something that where there there are other other water rights that we hold we hold on other bodies and other. Um, and, and, and just to in, to include our, to include all of our water rights, just some line to say and and other water rights as uh, um, and, and other wa water rights we hold on other mm -hmm. on <laughs> in within the watershed. Something maybe like that. we could move that to the actual goal where it says protect, develop, and extend the district's water rights, and maybe identify how broad they are there. So that's overarching that it's a holistic approach to our water rights strategy. Yeah, and that's what I was going to suggest. I think we tried to capture that in the in the primary objective, um, but maybe saying something along the lines of, you know, including but not limited to these these uh, specific efforts that are listed below, or and or that, such or such as White Pines Lake because it's not yeah you know, that encompassing, you know, it right, is a, right. it is that's, a integral part, but it's not that large. It's a, it's actually our smallest service area. <laughs> See, that's you know so that's why uh -huh. it would um, it, yeah. So I I think it's a good point. So let's 
work on the we don't have to wordsmith it here, but we can go back and work on a way to capture that. You know, this is not the uh, the all inclusive list of of water rights issues that we're working on. Yeah, as I say, you could say such as White Pines Park and and list others, but you know, take yes. the emphasis down. We can do that on D. Thank you, um, Brad. Uh, your comment, and then we're going to move on. Sure, I, I think. Director Edelman's point is a really good one. I can look at each of those bullet points and think of ways that you'd want to expand them to encompass, you know, the three watersheds, McCalmy, Calders, and Stanislaw that we rely on. Uh, I think a lot of that can be done in the header. I would be open to the idea of removing some of those bullet points or refining those. Uh, and then I just wanted to point out for F that I would avoid the term neighboring and just keep it as other water rights holders because I think to a point that was raised, uh, there are aqua committees, other events happening in Sacramento where we may join that would have water rights holders from many other parts of the state that aren't neighboring, uh, but may share our collective interests for things like state filed rights, et cetera. Yeah, and totally I totally agree. There's a, a lot point. of partnerships. Yeah, and I wouldn't want to necessarily exclude, you know, we, we may be on the, we may be have I mean, we certainly do have in some cases shared interests with East Bay Mud or or a Southern California agency, and I wouldn't want to, uh, you know, diminish that by limiting it to the headwaters or Mountain Counties agencies. So mm -hmm. I think we can come up with some language there that that is more inclusive, but really captures the the importance of collaborating on those efforts. Thank you, Michael, because my dog drinks fresh McCollumy water every morning, and we would like to thank all of you. That. And she knows where her water comes from. I, I was skiing on your, your water supply just last weekend. <laughs> okay, great. So, um, Maria, if we can move on to objective nine. Ellen, it looks like we have one more hand raised. Oh, I don't see it. Thank you. It's Ed Pattinson. Pattinson, sorry. Sorry, I, I lowered it. it. I may not have lowered it in time. Thank oh, you. yeah, I don't <laughs> okay. see it. So well, I had a comment on the previous section, but I can reserve till later or mention it now. Mention it now, please. Uh, I'm sorry if I missed the opportunity. We jumped through the first four pretty quick, but that had to deal with hydropower. And I just wanted to mention that uh, uh, it, it, you know, hydropower is a very expensive, heavy regulated resource area. And I don't know if it belongs under um, this uh, particular objective or the previous with regard to financial fiscal responsibility. Uh, but there's a lot of seasonal um, hydropower revenue, year to year hydropower revenue, various uh, regulatory compliance measures and inspections through DSOD and uh, VERC Part 12 and so on. And one of the uh, objectives TUD is looking at, and, and I think we've already implemented, is contingency and reserve funding. Because with those type of large initiatives, uh, if you don't have contingency uh, and reserve funds, uh, you just can't deal with the, uh, the, the variable uh, cash flow. And so- Is that D, I mean B, one B adding on to that, Ed? Well, I don't know. I'm just suggesting into your fiscal responsibility. And I think even here you mentioned a fund for exploring the FERC licensing and and I don't know where New Hogan is at currently in terms of ownership. But uh, I just wanted to point out that as we're, you know, we're working on acquiring some PGE assets, including hydropower, one of our key uh, terms that we're really focusing on because the variability of cash flow on large expensive projects is having sufficient contingency and reserve funding to be able to um, navigate the uh, the highs and lows of, of those kind. You know, you basically save when you are making money uh, and put it aside in contingency and reserve uh, funds so that you can survive, fiscally survive during drought and low periods or uh, large uh, capital expenditures. So do we want to add an E maybe here that says something like consider uh, contingent, consider uh, impacts of funding and financing? So mechanisms? I, I appreciate that comment, Ed, and you're right. The, 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 the revenue is 
highly variable <laughs> and, and it varies from one project to the next too. Some are more, uh, some are more reliable and some are uh, extremely variable depending on the watershed that they're in and the, the, the regulatory, you know, the FERC license com, uh, compliance requirements. Um, in this case, I think what we were trying to capture, because um, we don't currently exercise that level of control over the budget for those projects, and we were trying to really capture um, positioning um, the district for the FERC relicensing process that we're about to in, um, embark on and, and the structure, the ownership and, and um, uh, the partnerships, the structure of those partnerships and how that benefits the district and the county. And so we we do have um, some financing, um, some references to financing mechanisms under this objective that we, I think initially they were under goal A, but again, we for this objective, we tried to consolidate all of the hydropower objectives under under goal B, even though they, they definitely cross over into those other areas. Um, so do yeah, you feel, Michael, that we've um, addressed those funding and uh, irregularities, I guess, um, for lack of better terminology, and what we have, or do we need to add anything? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I definitely um, understand and appreciate the point. I just, for as, as far as where, how those projects are managed right now, the, the funding variability doesn't affect CCWD as much as the, um, as, as much as it might go into going into the next license term. Um, so it's just so something to consider in the negotiation. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I guess my point, and I understand, uh, and and those are good comments, Michael. But it, when you do embark on a FERC relicense or even saving money for it, I, and you're potentially competing, uh, FERC as a regulatory body will be looking at your technical manager on financial capacity, the, what we call a TMF, to be able to manage and operate a, a large hydro uh, project regulated by FERC. And they're going to be looking at reserve funds and contingency funds, you know, because we talked about the variability of the cash flow. Part of it is also the variability of uh, expenses and when you get an, uh, an expense on a hydropower project dealing with dams and tunnels and and um, you know turbines uh, you know, you're counting in sometimes uh, seven digits or more and you're going to have to have quite a large reserve or contingency fund to be able to absorb those kind of blows so and it's going to take time to get there that's why I pointed it out Thank you. B says determine funding mechanisms to support for relicensing short and long term processes, maybe just to kind of note that it's more than just the actual negotiation. It's the kind of life cycle. And we don't necessarily have to add that, but it might capture it more. Yeah, I think that's good. So um, I want to try to get through 9 through 12, I believe, and then we are going to take a 10-minute break. Um, you guys have been really committed. We appreciate that. So um, go ahead with number 8, Maria, or is it 9? Nine? Nine. No one really commented on 8, I don't think, but okay. we'll take nine. that. If there are additional comments with 8, we'll do it with these. Objective nine, continue to implement water conservation initiatives, such as leak detection and infrastructure replacement. Objective 10, maintain up-to-date district policies. Objective 11, offer low-income payment assistance. And objective 12, educate and engage our communities about the district's commitment to healthy watersheds and forests. <clears throat> Any comments to add, eliminate, or modify? On number on number nine, water conservation. I I, I think I, when you hear this, see the first part of that sentence, I think a lot of people think water conservation is you know turning the water off while you're showering, putting a bucket in there to water your plants. I mean, and and then and then the second part of the sentence takes away takes away from that thought process. And I'm not quite sure if that's what the intent what the intent was. I mean, if we're because when you ask them for water conservation, we're taken away from income. 
um, for the for the district. If we're asking people to use less water when we don't have any reason to ever do that here in our district, we're water water rich. We have a lot of water that flows through this county that we don't use, and and in each of in each of the three watersheds that we that we take water from. Um, but is that what we're purposely trying to do? Is to avoid asking customers to use less water, or we're we're going to conserve water other elsewhere? Is is there a reason it reads this way? Thank you. I'm I sure, Brad. That I hopefully you're going to respond to that. It sounded like Michael wanted to, so perhaps. Well, I, just, I was just going to say it's a good point, and there's sort of the two different components to water right. conservation, and. There's that the side of it that we can control, which is we tried what we tried to emphasize here um, as examples, um, you know, such as leak detection and infrastructure replacement. Um, but there's also the you know customer outreach and communication. There's a rebate program that we have. There's you know the effort, the the drought action plan that we have to implement when we do have conservation mandates. Um, so maybe it would be, uh, you know, maybe maybe we should mention. Um, implementation just the word out just that word outreach <clears throat> customer outreach uh is i think yeah. would hit it i think that's right i think that's worth mentioning here that um you know because those are part of our water concert conservation initiatives we have our own you know leak detection and infrastructure replacement but i, th I think we should add um outreach um something along the lines of customer outreach as well i think that's a great suggestion Okay, thank you. Brad, did you want to add to that? I, I think you hit kind of what I was going to say on there. Just to answer um, Director Ratterman's question, yes, there there is consideration for water conservation, including things like outreach, leak detection, infrastructure replacement. Um, and the only other thought I would add to this is a lot of these conservation initiatives kind of collapse under the idea of uh, demand management measures or water shortage actions. There's there's that term terminology being thrown around from the state. Um, and so if we could at all pull that in here, um, I would be interested to, because I think it would actually kind of include a lot of what we're talking about here. Excuse me, I'd like to make a comment because if I'm thinking of this or reading it as a water uh, customer and I'm reading water conservation initiatives such as leak detection that just seems so overblown it's just not what i would think of when i think of initiative or i guess what it's responding to as well as best management practices um yeah. overall for the district and we want to make sure that our customers recognize that we're taking you know we're taking precaution and preventative measures Right. That yeah, makes, and I yeah, I think that's a that's a good point. And when we we can wordsmith this af afterwards and and make sure that we're we're this, you know we're drawing that distinction between customer outreach initiatives and the district's own water conservation initiative. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, great. Um, any other comments on the objectives for? I think we're on goal B. Uh, I just want to raise a general comment that I, I'm not sure if we touched on before and if we did, I apologize if I'm restating it, but you'll see in the objectives document uh, words that are bolded and, and I really um, appreciate that Ellen and Maria took the time to do that because those, the, the, but I don't know if we explained the significance of that to the board and those are terms that um, came up in the surveys and came up in the interviews. Um, and so they made sure to highlight for us um, terms that were were important and raised repeatedly through that process and, and show that we're capturing those things. So, so the input from all levels of the organization and everybody that has provided input um, can see where where that information came from and it's been it's highlighted here. So I just I think that's um, I, I just really appreciate that you guys did that because it it. it helps i think demonstrate to everybody that we've taken all that input very seriously and and made a really it's been a huge part of the effort here to incorporate everybody 
Thank you. If there's no other comments on goal B, I'd like to make the rec uh, recommendation that we take a 10 minute break and try to come back at um, 1022. If that works for everyone, I'd like to ask you to turn your cameras off and mute. And then when you come back to turn your cameras um, back on so we know that you're back. Thank you.
I think we're all starting to come back. If you could please um, turn on your cameras if you're back so we know you're back. And if you're calling from a mic only, if you could just let us know you're back so we can test that your mic is also working. This is Cindy, I'm back. Great, thank you. Director Davidson, are you back? I don't see Director Davidson's phone number on here. Anymore. Okay, I wasn't sure whose phone number. I thought that was his, so that must be Cindy's. I'm logged in online. I don't know if that matters with my phone number or not. Um, you might just see. No, CS. I see you. I see there you. you. Go. Okay. Any uh, any of those that are at the district's offices, they may have had a bathroom line. There's another fine example from working from home, no lying. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Director Sakata, how do you think things are going so far? I think they're going great. I like the idea though, what we did first, we should read every one of the goals, you know, like, we're going on goal C, read all the one through seven, and then you ask each director their comments. I think it moves along quicker, less interruptions. Yeah, I think it's a good idea, and I want to make sure I get everybody out um, on time since we only have an hour and a half left, and I always love to get the board out earlier if we can, because four hours, three and a half hours is a long time. Yeah, I agree, but I think if you should, when we come back to the meeting, you might want to say, let's go for that um format because sure well i liked it <laughs> i yeah, don't know I about anybody works. else i also like the discussion we're having though so i don't want to detract from that in any way um because it just enriches i mean the plan gets better you can see why this input is so critical absolutely yeah it's been a really um i've enjoyed the workshops i think it's been really helpful and, and i like what um what the results are Everybody seems to be doing a really good job. Great, so it looks like we have, um, whoops, in the boardroom, it looks like we have uh, Director Thomas and Underhill back. Uh, do we have Director Davidson back? And Ratterman, Scott, are you back? I'm I'm here, Ellen, I, I don't see, um... Jeff's phone number on the list anymore. Yeah, I hesitate to um, start without Jeff back online. So maybe we can make, uh, wait, is Michael back? Michael's here. I'm back, I'll check with Jeff right now. Okay, terrific. And uh, for all the others, we are going to go back to the way we were doing it before. I'm going to read goal C um, and the entire objectives, and then we're going to do it more roll call style, only because I want to get you out all on time, and we still have several uh, goals with goal F being rather long. So I want to manage our time while getting uh, this important conversation in. The programs, projects, and initiatives, um, and this next one I think will generate uh, some discussion because again, this is really um, mostly what the district is doing day in and day out and uh, deserves that level of discussion. How's the size on this? Is it readable? Should it go bigger? I can see it fine. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. At, at my elevated age, I can't see it at all. <laughs> <laughs> just, just kidding. 
<laughs> Thank you, Maria. That's much better. I'm telling you, my eyesight just during this this lockdown has gone bad. I think it's just from sitting at a screen 10 hours a day, which I never did before. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to getting back to real life here. Aren't we all? Yeah, yeah I think I'm going to need stronger glasses. <laughs> yeah. Larger monitors help with that. Yeah, that's true. Except I move rooms quite a bit. I can't, I mean, for me to be sitting at all is quite different from my experience. <laughs> so I can't sit in a in a room very long. So hopefully President Davidson will be joining us again here momentarily, but I think we should probably go ahead and get started. We still have quite a bit of ground to cover. And- okay. okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and read three, through these. Uh, Goal C, operational integrity, ensure district operations deliver efficient and reliable water and wastewater services. Uh, Goal one, ensure our infrastructure is operated and maintained to fully realize their expected lifespan. Two, implement preventative, predictive, and corrective maintenance plans to ensure safe and reliable operations, including continue to modernize wastewater treatment and recycle water delivery systems to increase the use of recycled water, which decreases demand for raw water. B, develop a short, mid, and long-term approach to to project implementation that aligns with value added, optimizes the budget, and is paced for successful outcomes. Three, develop standard operating procedures and improve technology that will create efficiencies, reduce risk and cost and ensure consistency throughout the district. Four, rehabilitate or replace aging infrastructure to increase reliability, capacity, and efficiencies. Five, develop a health and safety program and promote health and safety in all that the district does to protect our community and proactively manage our risk. Six, monitor and adapt to emerging and existing regulatory requirements and mandates. Seven, communicate on the district's operational efforts to effectively deliver water and wastewater services. So again, and I believe Director Davidson has joined us. Is that true? Yep. Yep. Great, thank you. Um, We just uh, went through goal C and the objectives. So we are going to do roll call style in the uh, respect for our limited time left. So I'm going to go ahead and start uh, with Director Ratterman, is there anything here that should be eliminated, added, or modified? Um, I don't have any comments right now. Okay, terrific. If I serve, serve my time to when something pops in my head, I'll speak up. Sure, thank you. Director Sakata. The only comment I want to make, and I'm sure all staff is going to Um, be aware because I always talk about um, expenses. But on number three, uh, develop the standard operating procedures and whatnot. But when it gets to, um, you know, create efficiencies, reduce risks and costs, I'd just like to see the emphasis on reducing costs, you know, creating the efficiencies, reducing costs. Um, I just want to make sure that everybody's mindful about um, you know, I've said it before, spending other people's money. And whether it's here or back in the financial side, I just, it stood out to me when cost was last in that reason for these operating procedures. I'd like to see that as a priority, but I would still be okay with the way this was written. I just wanted to make that comment and everything else I'm okay with. That, that's good. And that's one of the reasons we were sensitive to that. And that's one of the reasons that we said we'll, increase, we'll create efficiencies because by creating efficiencies, that usually has a cost implication. And of course, managing risk uh, preventatively usually saves money. So we wanted to be very mindful of that. But I think just putting maybe where the word cost shows up in the sentence, if that's helpful, that's an easy fix. Would that mean... Um, some of your I'm good. concerns. I, I'm good with it. Yeah, make that change. I'm good. Reduce costs and risks. So that sounds good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Director Ratterman. 
Um, yeah, I just was curious as to why consistency in that sentence is is highlighted. That 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 particular word, um, it seems like there's a lot of the efficiencies, uh, risks, costs, um, and, and I'm glad to see risks are are in there. That's that's a huge insurance uh, avoidance um, is one of the best ways to insure uh, in, insure loss, but. Consistency. This doesn't seem like it should be bolded. What? Thank what, you. And what, I want to. I want to remind everyone that the bolding that's within these sentences was only to indicate that this came out of an interview or survey. So that's why it's in here. Somebody specifically mentioned it. They will not be bolded in the strategic plan um, moving forward. But this was just to indicate. So why? Why did staff and the consultants even put this in here? We want to alert you that it's in here because this came from our discussions or workshops or survey. It won't be bolded in the final copy. So consistency is not any particular special word, except that it came out of um, our stakeholders input. OK, thank you. OK. Um, Thank you, Director Underhill. Oh yes, and talking about the, the highlighting, it was important enough for our staff to mention it so that you know it would come to our attention. And so I think that's important that you did that. But no, I'm, I'm fine with uh, goal C. Thank you, Director Thomas. Um, I like everything that I see here with Cindy's suggested change. It's good. Thank you, Director Davidson. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm uh, I'm content with. Goal C. Thank you. Any input from uh, staff or the public? Yes, Damon. Hi, thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to touch upon the consistency uh, conversation, I think. Uh, overall, staff recognize that there's perhaps many ways of doing things throughout the district culturally, and I think a lot of folks acknowledge that if we can um, standardize most of what we do, it'll it'll meet that objective. And I think because I hear a lot of uh, conversation about consistency in the day to day uh, ops of facilities as well, and I think it also highlights that the district works to uh, uh, implement infrastructure that is uniform also. And so I think it, it kind of mirrors that objective as well. Thank you. Appreciate that um, input, Damon. Any other comments? Does the board feel like the way that um, the objectives are stated under goal C that they would uh, be able to vote on this in the next board meeting? Yes. yes. Yes, it's fine with. Yep. With yes, looks good. Great. I'm not hearing any no's, so we're going to go ahead and move on to Gold D. Do you want to read through these, Maria, or would you like me to? Sure. Gold D is customer experience, and we did discuss earlier moving it up higher to one of the earlier goals. So we'll be doing that in the final document. Customer experience. Build trust and demonstrate value to customers with responsive service and positive experiences. Our objectives are objective one, engage customers and educate on district's achievements through local venues and outreach. Objective two, implement strategies to get customer input, such as customer surveys, to inquire about experiences, obtain feedback, understand priorities, and learn preferred communication modes. Objective three, connect with our county residents and businesses by engaging with them regularly at local events, press releases, news stations, and communications that highlight how the district is serving them. Objective four, provide services that are accessible and cost effective to customers, including the district's website to transact business. Objective five, Instill a district-wide culture that fosters positive customer experiences. Objective six, improve communications with customers through the following. A, seeking to understand the customer point of view. B, prioritizing responsiveness to phone calls and electronic inquiries. C, enhancing access and response times through technology. 
especially as related to emergency situations. Great, thank you, Maria. Any um, comments from Director Ratterman on Goal D objectives? Are we missing anything? Do we need to add, um, eliminate or modify? Um, look, looks good. Thank you, Director Sakata. Well, of course I have a comment. <laughs> um, let's see. So I'm thinking possibly moving number two up to the first spot and then move every, everything down. And um, just because I think um, getting strategies to get customer input, I know it's extremely important to me. And then the other comment on number four, whenever I see anything, you know, provide services that are accessible and cost effective, every time I see a website or something more digital related that requires internet, I think of my district because it, it tends to be an area that doesn't have good internet just because of the location. And I'm wondering if this is a possibility, something to consider. Maybe it doesn't have to be in our objectives here, but set up some kind of, of a um, CCWD substitution for the administrative staff in certain areas. And I'm thinking West Point, one, it could potentially um, lessen all the service call or all the calls for admin. They could make payments there you know, maybe even if it's only once a week, um, but that might help and, and, and lessen some of the calls if some of these folks can come in person and make the payments. And, and maybe you have something like that already, I don't know. But when I see, you know, the website to transact business, not everyone can use the website because of internet. And then on number six, C, again, I see enhancing access and response time through technology. So again, is there, you know, some other way to enhance it, not just some type of digital technology? Okay, so um, thank you. Let's, let's maybe start if you could scroll up. Um, Maria, I'd like to hear a little bit maybe too, not to put Jessica on the spot, but um, if you have any response to this, I know that part of it's technology related and that meets some customers needs, but not others, particularly if there are technology barriers. Um, so are there other ways uh, to transact business that would be in person, such as paying bills? And I don't know, Jessica, if that's your area of expertise. So anyone can feel free to comment on how we might uh, change this. Um, yeah, well, currently our doors are open, so customers can absolutely come in and they can pay bills um, in person, they can pay bills over the phone, they can pay bills online. So maybe it says provide services that are accessible and cost effective to customers, including use of district's website, um, telephone, and in-person abilities. So you're you're providing you're providing different modes of being able to access uh, transactions through the district. So maybe we're just showing that we have a range of opportunity. This both technology driven as well as in person. Would that be helpful, um, Cindy, to making this more appealing? Yeah, I'd like to see it like that if you can. Okay, because that's that's being able to go to every type of demographic, people who are more remote, people who are closer to the district, um, et cetera. So uh, with that addition, if we want to move on to the next one that Cindy recommended. And, and I have one more, well, I have a question. So you highlighted, every, you know, the uh, like websites highlighted because in, in the survey, uh, you, we had that request. Were there any customers that responded to our survey or was it just in-house and board members yeah this was not sent out to the public and we've tipped okay. i i personally have never experienced sending a survey out to the public for the strategic plan our access to the public is the invitations and showing up to the board uh meetings which is put on your website so we did not do a customer survey 
Uh, and I, I think there was some um, uh, survey discussion, right, above, yeah. and maybe Jessica wants to address that just in the future uh, through customer surveys and our ability to get that input in the future. Right. I just wanted to make sure I understood it with the um, with the bolding there. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, the bolding was um, was again. It was definitely staff. We had over thirty staff that participated. It was the full board. Um, interviews and surveys, as well as we had over a half a dozen uh, external to the district that responded, um, as well as others like your union representation, uh, county representation, uh, some former uh, employees to the district, all participated um, in interviews or surveys. Mm -hmm. And it was really great to get that different perspective so we could look back in the history of the district as well as looking at projecting forward. So it was really good to have that granular, you know, that granular approach to different yes. perspectives. And then on C where I had saw the word technology again, after reading the whole sentence, I'm okay with that there. I don't, I don't need any change or any more comment on that on C. Okay. Thank you. Director Ratterman. Uh, yeah, just one one quick comment on on number five. It it seems like under the um, goal of customer experience that number five, um, after Cindy moved one of them, one of the other ones up, I that surely seems to be to be the top one. And I wanted to to ask my fellow board members if they agreed on, under I the agree. goal of customer experience. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. agree. I agree, and we hear that a lot, Scott, and I think. <clears throat> Great that you move it. And we also underscored it in the overarching goal D. You can see the sentence ends with to customers with responsive service and positive experiences. So that is something that there was a lot of consistency in our responses back. So thank you um, for that recommendation. Uh, Director Underhill. Oh, yes. Um, I'm, no, I'm satisfied with the changes. I'd just like to talk about 6A, uh, improve communications with customers through the following. Seek to understand the customer point of view. I, you know, uh, I can say I understand, but am I going to do anything about trying to please you or, or, you know, that is just kind of a, doesn't give me much satisfaction. Really, so seeking to understand the customer point of view to improve district service. That that would just adding that would be yeah. That sounds great. Uh huh. Uh huh. Great. Thank you, Director Underhill. Director Thomas. Okay. Um. I, I am totally uh, in agreement with moving number five up to number one, but there's uh, going to require some uh, little wordsmithing there because there's a lot of redundancy. If you have stated uh, the same uh, sequence of words in the gold D customer experience, and then you and then you follow with a, a number one thing you uh, foster positive customer experiences. Um, anyway, but Maria can figure out how to how to do that. But I would suggest that five go to, go to one with with some um, wordsmithing. Uh, six should be two, and then I think Cindy wanted to move number two to one. But then I think that number two should go immediately after after six, and then all the, these other things following. So you're yeah. saying elevate improve communications because hopefully if we're improving communications, everything gets better, right? The customer exactly. experience, yeah. everything yeah. else will follow. So yeah. is there anyone who objects to moving number six up front? Again, we want to no. try to get away no. from no, making good. these hierarchical in any way, but I can understand why you want to emphasize. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm good with it. I like I'm it. Good. I think he wanted three. You can think he wanted was three right now up to two, though. Are you OK with that, um, Director Sakata? Yes, I'm fine with that. Sounds great. Everything Russ said. And I just want to make the distinction for number one. One of the reasons that we repeated the positive experience, and maybe this isn't 
coming out enough. It says instill a district wide culture. This is really um, beyond just whoever's answering the phone or right in front of the customer at the time that they have a recommendation or complaint, however you want to characterize it. It's really to get whether you're in the office, in the field, anytime you're wearing that district logo on your shirt or your truck, you have a certain personification of who the district is through our culture. So that's why we created number one. It's more than just providing a customer experience in our words. It's really trying to install it in our DNA of our employees. If that makes sense, that's what we were trying to underscore. Makes perfect sense. Thank you. No, 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 Director Davidson, any uh, comments? No, I'm, 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 uh, I'm happy with uh, the changes that uh, the other directors have made. OK, um, thank you. Are there any questions from staff or the public on Gold D? Thank you. Moving on to the next goal. Goal E, people and partnerships. I personally, this is my favorite because I've never used this as a goal in anyone's strategic plan like this. And um, I think it was really fun that this came to our attention. And again, that was all because of interviews and the survey. People and partnerships engage our stakeholders and partners to best protect our water resources and infrastructure and further our shared interests. Uh, objective one, develop and execute a communication plan that supports the district's outreach to internal and external partners and reflect our shared values and mission. Two, engage and facilitate partnerships to best utilize the district's assets and promote the district's legislative positions. Three, create a recognizable presence in the county through thought leadership and rebranding. Four, Continue to develop relationships with local, regional, state, and federal partners to manage our district's risk and leverage our assets. Five, closely monitor and engage in any relevant policy developments. Six, partner with other organizations and water agencies on grant opportunities and policy advocacy. Seven, increase district recognition and expand partnerships engagement through community events and outreach opportunities. Um, so with that, I would like to go through the roll call method again. Director Ratterman, anything you would like to eliminate, add, or modify? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Director Sakata. I'm with Scott. Not yet. It looks good right now. Thank you. Director Underhill. Okay. Uh, please remind me uh, how we're going to get through thought leadership. OK, thought leadership is number three, create a recognizable presence in the county through thought leadership and rebranding. Um, so we like this presence of thought leadership and thought leadership is really um, speaking to we need to be at the right organizations. We need to be at the table, irrespective of who those stakeholders are, anything that would be relevant to the water district. And we need to be leading in those discussions um, that are relevant, that help protect um, our water assets, essentially. So we put that term thought leadership in there just to, to denote that we don't really want to be passive. We want to be the thought leaders and to inspire others to deal with anything that is of interest to the district in terms of um, our services, our assets, or our risks. So I don't know if I answered your question, Director Underhill, but that was the thought behind it. I was, yeah, I was thinking, have I you know, missed a new way of doing leadership entitled thought leadership? That's what I was thinking. Well, you've done it for years. Oh, have you? <laughs> well, you have. So. OK, well, you know, but I'm saying that <laughs> to make it, you know, current. Uh, I have another couple of things on number five closely monitor and engage in any relevant policy developments. And who are we talking about specifically? And number six, partner with other organizations and water agencies on grant opportunities and policy advocacy. And it sounds like when you say partner, we will just con will continue to partner. We've been doing that so that why don't we just say continue to partner? Perfect. So let's add to number six, continue to partner. 
On five, closely monitor, engage in any relevant policy um, developments. I believe your question is like, what policy developments? We put relevant here um, to qualify that a bit. Obviously, we're going to be looking at policies that are relevant to the district. Some of it, for example, might be fire uh, policy that normally wouldn't, but do have water implications right to a healthy watershed as well as being able to do water or firefighting rather so is there something you'd like to see director underhill that would be added to this to make to clarify this more and well, just to add to that response i think we initially had a much longer sentence there where we were talking about state and federal you know legislative and regulatory policy advocacy and it, it just got very kind of um it, it convoluted i think or, or it was hard to be concise when you when you reference all those different areas where we're engaged so i think we ended up trying to streamline that into relevant relevant policy developments regardless of the the source um it, it may be you know a, a a county ordinance or it may be a federal okay. you know legislative so effort could we add to that say relevant policy development that affects CCTV. Yes. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I think that's what we were trying to capture with the word relevant, because we do, I think that is one of the areas, and we've discussed this quite a bit in, in our advocacy, you know, wanting to be engaged in areas where there's an impact on the district, but not wanting to go beyond, you know, what is, what is directly relevant to us. Um, with our limited resources for that type of an effort. So I think that's why we were, that's the, 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 the qualifier there was relevant policy development. So we could clarify that further. Relevant to CCWD. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you um, for that. Any other comments, Director Underhill? No, that's it, thank you. Director Thomas. I don't have anything to add, but I like what I'm hearing here from my colleagues, so. And that's Thank it. you, Director Davidson. No, nope, we're all good. Thank you. Any comments uh, from staff or the public? Okay, yeah, this Director is Scott. Mm -hmm. I want to. I want to try and understand number seven a little bit better. What? What? What do we? What do we? What are we trying to get there? Sure. Um, so this came up too. I'm surprised we don't have anything bolded on here, but a couple things came up with this when we uh, wrote this. Increasing the district recognition. If you recall, there um, th we, there was some discussions about our logo on the trucks. There was discussion about how we're perceived in the community, and we thought a good way in increasing the district's presence and being more connected to the community is to show up and, and show up at these community events, wherever that might be, um, like with the Chamber of Commerce, there could be other areas, that, and I know that you're already attending those, um, but we wanted to be able to increase our district's recognition and also really live our brand. Brand's not just your logo on the side of the truck door, right? It's those interactions and exchanges and engagement that we actually have with your community. So I know that this is something that Jessica is also looking at of how we're going to expand our outreach opportunities and our partnerships um, where they make sense. So Jessica, I didn't know if you had anything else to add to this. No, I think I think you said it well. I think you know one big thing that's important to me is that um, we um, we are part of our community. I mean, you know, obviously we, we engage with our community because we have you know thirteen thousand customers, but I think it's important that we um, we make it a priority to 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 be show up and be at these events or whatever it may be, but to just increase our engagement with our local. Uh, community members so like the far if you have farmers markets or you have you know the fair things that where you have more of a presence and them just getting their water bill in the mail that's not that's not you know the only thing that we represent in the community we want them to see us as working on their behalf okay thank you and i and i do agree with that 100 percent. as was hoping what i was um hoping what it was what it was about and that'd be great to see more more of uh, one, one last comment on number three, um, the word rebranding, it, it sounds, does it, is that obligating us to 
change our logo, for example. I mean, I, and I know Ellen, you just commented that rebranding doesn't necessarily mean mean that, but it certainly sounds like three certainly sounds like that. We did and hear that in the surveys that there is some interest in rebranding. I mean, people got pretty graphical even about the presence that we have with our current uh, brand. And it's not uncommon during a strategic planning process that we want to hold on to a lot of the great parts of our culture and tradition, but we also want to be projecting um, that the next five years isn't going to be exactly like the last five years. So it's not uncommon for districts to rebrand in that next five year period. I don't think it obligates you that you have to change your logo, but it is saying that the district doesn't want to be perceived um, by today's standards tomorrow, because we did hear, to be frank, some critical, I think, feedback about the district's presence. And it's something that everyone felt collectively we'd like to see improve throughout the county and through our partners. So that's why we chose to include that, because even if it's not through the image rebrand, which is not a bad um, alternative, it's got to be more than just the cosmetic part of modernizing the district and just to add on to that real quick it does i agree it doesn't obligate oh hold on are we can you guys hear us we can hear you oh okay uh my computer just froze but as long as you can hear me um it doesn't obligate us to do anything but i think it it, it recognizes sort of a i think there's kind of a groundswell of of support for a change in an in image, including the the visual image. And I think part of that is because of the fact, not just that this, um, you know, that, that we hope to be moving in new directions, but capturing the fact that there's already been a pretty radical transformation of the district over the last few years in, in really remarkable ways. And, and demonstrating that um, with our aesthetic, I think is, is important and captures the, the change that has taken place at the same time you know not as ellen mentioned um respecting and acknowledging our, our history so i i don't it doesn't obligate us to do anything um but i think i think um i think there's a, a fair amount of support for moving in that direction can I add on? I think it's an important um comment about obligation to the strategic plan Hopefully the strategic plan, the will is being represented here to execute and implement it, but things are going to come up. You have a chance every board meeting, but you definitely have a chance every year where you're going to operationalize the strategic plan. You're going to hold yourselves accountable by what you fund, what you don't fund, what your will is of the board in terms of executing um, on the objectives in the strategic plan. The strategic plan was meant to capture that goodwill moving forward, help direct staff what's a priority um, from the board's perspective, but also noting that this is a dynamic strategic plan. Like in the time of COVID, I can tell you, at least my former clients, they have to recalibrate what they're doing in their strategic plan to meet new obligations, new regulatory requirements. They have to constantly be nimble. And this plan is meant to keep you nimble by saying, well, we said one through seven was a priority. We're clearly not going to do that all in 2021. This is over the next five years plus. Most of my strategic plans have a signature with a plus sign because it may be year six or seven. But this is the intention moving forward of what we want to accomplish. And strategic plans should be part of aspirational that, yes, 80 percent, we have to meet our obligations, but we have an aspirational element to this as well to meet our envisioned future. So I want to address that because I think it's a really um, important. Yeah, we said this, but you will have to recheck. Is this still a priority amongst all the other things that a board has to weigh in on over time? This is Cindy. Um, I like number three. However, when we do talk about the rebranding and we're thinking of new logos uh, for all the vehicles and stuff, and me personally, I don't think it would be a proper time to be having that expense. But if it's something to um, eventually lead to, 
I think that's okay. But I just wouldn't want to have this number three say, okay, that's what we're going to do. And I think it doesn't say that. It is more of a goal down the road. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, this is Director Davidson. I, I agree with Cindy on that point. It, we've we've talked about the, the the logo several times over the over my tenure, but it, it's an expensive uh, process, and it's something that um, we would certainly want to have to have that probably budgeted. I I I think people underestimate the the cost of uh, new business cards, new uh, new uh, vehicle. Uh, signs, all that kind of stuff. It's certainly something we want to, we want to, we want to understand what the budget number is going to be before we go forward with something like that. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? <clears throat> and even in private business, we look at those rebranding costs and just to let you know, while maybe not ideal, it's something that even if you did decide to rebrand, you could go just as an example with a new website, but you're not going to go to the entirety of the expense of re putting new repainting all your vehicles. For example, that's something that you will consider anytime that this may come up into the future for uh, budgeting reasons. So, um, any comments again from the public or staff? Do the directors feel comfortable with um, this goal and the objectives as stated that when we come back to the next board meeting, you would be able to vote on this item? Yes. I'm, fi I'm fine with it. Thank you. Yes, looks good. I'd, I'd like to see the um, the numbers on, on this um, uh, potential of changing the uh, logo on the on the pickups. I, uh, Damon told me a month and a half ago that that they just bought seven hundred and fifty dollars worth of signs. But um, I mean, if if we are in fact going to try to um, uh, claim that that we're uh, repositioning our strategy, or, or repositioning our, uh, our our desire to be perceived as more uh, friendly and, and proactive with customers. Um, I, I think that spending a couple of thousand dollars on on um, uh, advertising the fact that you know, this is this is part of our commitment. This is you know we we want to. This is the new CCWD. This is uh, CCWD uh, for the next uh, uh, I don't know, uh, for for new generations. I I I, I don't want to. To uh, short, uh, I don't know, short sell our effort here. Uh, it's it's important to me that that we uh, make everything that we're doing here consistent and believable and tangible. So that's my two cents. Thank that. you. I, I I think that's a great point. Just real quick, I I uh, and I think there's a balance here where we can capture the 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 change and the the new I, I agree it is a different CCWD than it was even just a short time ago and I and I do think it's really important to find ways to effectively communicate that um, but I also am sensitive to the the cost constraints so we're going to be we're going to be budget conscious and and this is this would come back to the board um, and but I think there's a balance we can strike there where we're still effectively communicating that that change and and the the direction that we're taking um without you know without without going farther than we need to as far as budget goes i i volunteer to uh, fund the purchase of um, signs for four vehicles myself jeff you gonna do four you, you're aware of the fact this meeting's being recorded yeah okay yeah. we'll yeah. do it let's send them an invoice <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. I can tell that this is a this is always I like to say it, it kind of reflects the ethos of any organization and um, people wear their brand. We hope as a badge of honor and that hasn't always been the case that happens in private business that happens in public. So I think it's great to keep it on here and as the board dialogues and continues um, to move the district forward. 
uh, you guys can continue to have that, but it does seem important enough to capture what came back with the surveys and the inter interviews and show that there is some intention long as it's in balance with all the other priorities. And again, we're probably not going to use numbers when we number these in the strategic, when we put these in the strategic plan, they just may be bullets um, underneath. So Maria, who is just a master at design, will uh, look at the different methods of doing this, but you're probably not going to see numbers and letters either um, in terms of hierarchy. So thank you. Let's uh, move on to the next goal. We made it. OK, so this is going to be an extra long one, um, and I'm going to go ahead and read this. Goal F, enduring organization. Ensure reliable and consistent services through building an evolving organization that reflects the district's values. Objective one, create efficiencies and long-term cost effectiveness through advanced technology and modernizing business practices. Two, protect our assets through upgrading cybersecurity and on-site security. Three, ensure proactive succession planning to leverage our sustaining staff knowledge and onboard the next generation to inspire stability and innovation. Four, invest in employee engagement and wellness for recruitment and retention. Five, provide staff with training and professional development opportunities. Six, develop thought leadership in a knowledge sharing environment rooted in our mission and vision. Seven, enliven our core values and foster a trusting environment through the strategic plan as our guiding force for decision making and reflecting our why we serve. Eight, evaluate the district's essential staffing and priorities and employ district staff, partnerships, vendors, and consultants to align with strategic priorities and provide the most effective services. Nine, develop a district that our customers value and our board and staff are proud to serve through a recognizable and respected brand. Ten, value the workforce that enables us to deliver on the strategic plan goals and objectives and uphold the core values the district is committed to. Ten, did I say that right? 11, provide transparency by communicating frequently and broadly to unite our workforce and execute a living strategic plan through work that matters to our countywide interests. Um, if you could scroll to the top. So this is an extra long one. Um, I'm gonna just take the first maybe six of these as we go through and would like to call on Director Radiman. Well, first of all, I'd, I I like the word enduring. <clears throat> I think we had uh, we, we were fighting with wrestling. She was a better word with what we were going to use for s sustaining or sustainability or uh, ongoing. Um, I, I, I and that that enduring does good job. Th thank you for for coming up with something. Uh, whoever whoever is in charge of of that. Um, that's the only thing I have right I have right now. Um, I'll reserve my future comments for for future um, for later. Thank you. I, thank I just you. want to say thank you for for recognizing that, Director Ratterman. We probably considered um, I don't know over a hundred different options for <laughs> that particular word in this document. So I really appreciate you uh, on that out because I like I like where we ended up as well. <clears throat> thank Good. you, Cindy. Well, let's see. You know, at the moment, I think I'm OK, but kind of like with Scott, something else might come up from another board member or someone else. So I'm good for right now. OK, great. Director Underhill. Yes. Uh, the thing that I find of real value is the succession planning, because that's one of the things that I talked about for years, the fact that, you know, we are going through retirement, we're going through people leaving CCWD, moving elsewhere, and our succession planning. Because, you know, the thought is somebody leaves and there goes all their experience, all their knowledge and what have you. But if we're identifying the fact that <laughs> our organization is not gonna stay the same, that is the important part that we really need. And so I, I'm really happy with that being addressed. Otherwise, um, it's fine. 
Great, thank you. <laughs> Director Thomas. <clears throat> On the um, sentence number three, I, I'm, I'm just struggling with the the appropriateness of that word on board the next generation. Um, can can we suggest a different way of, of saying that? How um, about prepare? Excuse me? How about using uh, the word prepare the next generation? Or integrate? I think integrate, integrate. Um, would show that we're integrate. being inclusive. And that's good. Better than on board. Thanks. OK, great. Any other comments? Director nope. Thomas? Um, this, sorry. Go ahead, Cindy. This is Cindy. I I was looking at something. And, and number nine, I really um, like that. And I'm wondering if that should be moved to the top. Develop a district that our customers value and our board and staff are proud to serve through a recognizable and respected brand or maybe service. but. That to me is really important. I don't know how anybody else feels. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I'm, I'm OK with that. OK, let's move that up. And if there are um, Director Davidson, we were... do you have any comments on the first uh, seven? No, it's, it's a very thorough list. <laughs> OK, thank you. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Any uh, comments from the public or staff on the first seven? OK, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I think we're at number eight, right, Maria? I think we have to include seven because we moved one up. OK, seven. Thank you. <laughs> Develop thought leadership in a knowledge sharing environment rooted in our mission and vision. Eight, enliven our core values and foster a trusting environment through the strategic plan as our guiding force for decision making and reflecting our why we serve. I'm not going to read these again since I read through them already. Um, are there any are there any comments to seven through eleven? Starting with Director Ratterman. <clears throat> yeah, number number seven. I'm. Um... If there had been reference to that quote before somewhere, I, I can see using it here. I, I, is it is it referenced somewhere somewhere else? It it just comes out of the blue as as some guiding force. Um, or not not number seven. I guess it's number eight now. Um, and, and no, I don't like that. I, it doesn't sound right. It oh, doesn't. I mean, it's, it's, Are you having an issue with why we serve or guiding force? Both. Oh. Both. Um, no, I think we can change any of it here. So it might have come out of the surveys, et cetera, but it's not even highlighted, so we can change I, it. I like what it says. I like what it's I like what it says, but it's like find a different way of saying it. Sure. So values and fosters a trusting environment through the strategic uh, plan as our roadmap. As our guide. As our guide, our decision making. As our guide in how we do every our everyday activities or something like that. But to, why as we our serve? As our guide. Yeah. Okay. I mean, as our guide for decision making. Period. Do we need to put why we serve? No, we don't. Our decision making in 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 every aspect of our operation, or or I mean. I mean, just recognizing that the strategic plan can maybe influence decision making, but there's a lot more that goes into that, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I think the, the, trust, the trusting environment, the trusting environment, and and through our strategic plan, I think is is great. And just finishing it up uh, uh, looks better already, and it may we may be able to get better than that. Okay, great. Thank you, um, Director Sakata. Any comments? Bertha? Oh, no, I'm I'm good with the rest of it. Russ? Um, just put a, a period at the end of the, uh, uh, the guide for decision making. Drop that why we serve stuff. I think we've already talked about that. 
We added in every aspect of our operations. Are you good with that? It might not be on your yeah. copy in front yeah. of you. Okay. Yeah. I am. Great. Oh, uh, excuse me. On number 10, we have a dangling participle. <laughs> no. <laughs> hmm? Oh, my God. <laughs> not the dreaded dangling participle. <laughs> that will be addressed. That will be thank addressed. You for, thank you for pointing it out. <laughs> OK, Jeff, any comments? No, nope, I'm good. Any comments from staff or the public? Wow, um, so I want to take some time just to reflect that I believe we got through all of the goals. Did we not, Maria? We did. We didn't skip any. Um, I want to take some time now just to go back to each of the directors for two things. I want to know if there's anything in the goals and objectives that would prevent you from moving forward with this document after we make um, the changes and we will point out the changes that we make in the next board package when we adopt the entire strategic plan. So I'd like you to make two comments. One, how has the strategic planning process been for you to date? And do you feel like you could move forward with committing to this strategic plan for the next five years? And you guessed it, Scott, I'm going to start with you. Scott, we can't hear you. I'm sorry, you're on mute. <clears throat> Thank you. You're pretty consistent with calling on me first. I, <clears throat> I, I wish I was leader of District 5 today. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm going to say the same thing that I did the other on our other two workshops that I'm I didn't expect much coming in coming into uh, in into this and and I I'm Im impressed at, how, at what we've developed and how much thought has gone gone into it. Um, I think this is a great a great has been a great process and I think it was it, I didn't know it was necessary or even that it was an, an option here. But it, I, I looking at our I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing our new mission statement on the wall and and hopefully we get the other two um, up up there as well. I'm um that's my comments about what we've done here today and and then yes i can uh vote for um vote positively for what we've accomplished here and and uh, and get this approved in our next meeting thank you thank for you. uh for, to our consultants maria and Al. i think you've done a great a great job thank you for the feedback cindy yes um Everything looks great, so I would vote uh, to adopt it. I think it's all great. The uh, process has been um, really good. Um, I feel like I learned a lot uh, about CCWD and staff and whatnot, and I really enjoyed that. And the only other comment I would make, uh, would it be necessary to have staff bring back comments, say three to six months from adoption, just to give the board an idea of how um, the uh, draft or the objectives are working for them in their day-to-day -day operations to achieve the goals. You know, is there anything that could be updated? And um, I'd, I'd like to kind of know that if, if that's not too soon for them to give us an idea of how it's working for them to use these objectives. Thank you, Cindy. I'm really glad you brought that up because it is something um, that we entrust that the general manager, Michael Minkler, will use this strategic plan in his conversations with you moving forward and you would have updates with regularity on are there um, obstacles to executing right. on, on the strategic plan or is there a ways to enhance things? So Michael, maybe I could let you speak to that. I, I think it's a, a really good point. I'm glad you brought it up and actually Director Underhill and I were, were talking about something similar this week. And I, I would actually suggest maybe creating an objective along those lines under enduring organization that, that, that addresses um, developing and utilizing performance metrics for um, you know district 
uh, for district work efforts or district um, activities, because I think that is something that we've tried to do more of. Um, but I think we could also we need to do better at it, and and that includes, um, you know, a lot of different initiatives where where we need to make sure that we're not just especially as we're developing so many new uh, programs or business processes and implementing new technology, making sure that we're we're tracking the progress of those efforts and and reporting back to the board is is really important uh, in a time of a lot of change. So. Um, and, and I think that applies absolutely to this plan as well. So I'm really glad you raised that point, Director Skeda. Well, I just want to make sure that um, we didn't make this plan and it, nobody could work it. You know what I mean? And so when you start doing that, if you report back and say, no, we need to adjust this value or whatever. So great. Thank you. Thank you, Bertha. Oh, yes. I just, I want to thank you, Ellen, and, uh, uh, you know, for your help, and uh, Maria, we've completely uh, gone through a, a whole new process throughout the strategic planning. I haven't done a strategic plan in, I don't know, Jeff, when was the last time we did it? <laughs> Didn't follow I, don't, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> About 10 years ago, know. so. Yeah, it's great. And I think it was the board worked very well together. And I'm pleased to hear all of the uh, comments from everybody. Everybody had a part to play and they did that very well. And I'm very happy. And then as Cindy was asking or suggesting that we do hear uh, about how our plan is working, did we uh, take all this time to come up with something that we could work with, that we could see results. And so however you plan out how we're going to be getting the feedback is wonderful. But uh, I think this was a very successful uh, process. And I'm just very, as I say, I'm very, very pleased. And we'll work towards it. I will work personally towards it, its success. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, Russ, I know this was probably the best birthday present you got all day that we're going to end early, but we definitely want to hear your feedback. <laughs> OK, um, I, I've been uh, reflecting about this opportunity for uh, since we started and, and uh, you know, when you're an, uh, an elected official on a board like this, uh, you, you kind of try to do your best to do your your job in the in the best way that you can represent your constituents and and have a positive influence. But this this process really to me is uh, represented my first opportunity to put my fingerprints on some positive things that I hoped to accomplish when I got elected, uh, appointed first and then elected. But um, um, anyway, it's a, it's a good good process and and I think that the value of it can be measured in in uh, large part by the, the participation of of two uh, executive directors of adjacent counties water districts participating this morning they, 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 they can see the value of it uh, so that that makes me very happy um, I'm sorry that that uh, John Woodling couldn't join us today I always in, enjoy his uh, participation so tell him that we missed him but um, anyway I, I can uh, enthusiastically uh, vote to approve this when we meet again thank you and I know John was sorry he couldn't um, make it but I'm sure he'll be there when we adopt the final plan so um, thank you for your perspective Jeff yeah I, I just kind of want to echo uh, everybody else's comments I think the uh, probably the most important aspect of this planning process for me was uh, all the effort that our staff put into it, and that's that's really important. I mean, you know, as a board, we can we can only do so much, and it really uh, I really want to thank the all st all the staff <clears throat> for all their hard work uh, putting this plan together, and and of course I will support it. Um, 
Thank you. So um, before Michael concludes us, I just wanted on behalf of uh, Maria and myself to thank you for entrusting us to this really important process. And you guys have all done a tremendous job, staff, both staff that are present here as well as staff that participated in the survey. They're really going to be looking at this collective effort and say, was this worth our time? Was it worth our money? It's always the first thing on most of our minds when we're at a public um, level. And I'll be very excited to see you implement this plan. And if you don't implement the plan, I might come back as your angry public, not because I had a vested stake in your community, but rather because I really think that this plan is going to be important to modernizing your district. So I hope this is one a tool for you to do that. I'm going to let Maria have a few okay. words and then I want to hand it back over to Michael because we will be coming back to you as the next step of improving um, upon what was written here and coming back to your next, uh, I don't think it's the next board meeting by the way, but it's in April uh, that we'll come back with the finalized plan. So Maria? Yeah, I today is a really good feel good moment for me um, seeing us complete this final workshop all of the work that everyone put into these objectives, uh, just the sheer number of them shows that there was a lot of input and a lot of interest. And I really look forward to showing you the final plan as it all comes together. And I really appreciate all of the support and participation. And Maria didn't underscore, but she grew up in your community. So this must be exciting. It's really great to see. Yeah. So, um, Michael, uh, did you want to close this out here and then we could take any questions from staff or the public after that? Yeah, and I just really appreciate everyone's engagement again. Um, thank Larry and Ed for, for participating um, and, and making the time to, to be here today and make some, some really positive contributions. Um, and and really thank the board for the, the sincere engagement in this process. Um, because uh, as, as President Davidson mentioned, you know, it's the document's not worth much if we don't have staff buy in and staff input. And the same goes if we don't have genuine input from the board um, and, and engagement and support for it. And, and it's just really heartening, I think, to see after a, a lot of work that's gone into it to see, it, you know, buy in from from all all sides is is just fantastic. So. Um, really appreciate everyone's engagement. I'm excited about the final document and then um, the the new the new direction that we're going in once we have that. So thank you. Thank you. Do we have any um, comments or questions or statements from staff or the public? Well, thank you, Director Davidson. I think we're concluding um, our final workshop on the strategic plan. Thank you again, and we will see you at a board meeting in April um, to present the final content of the document. All right. <clears throat>do we just need to, would you like me to adjourn the meeting? To yes. adjourn the meeting, I think, yeah, I think yeah. we're concluding the meeting yeah. a half an hour early, might I add. So that's to your efficient work. All right, well, Good the meeting job. is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Jeff. Bye. Bye all right, have a good day. Thank happy you. Birthday, happy Russ. birthday again, Russ. Thank you. Bye -bye. Happy Thank birthday. You.